Chair Aikens. Here. Vice Chair Convery. She is absent, right? So, Commissioner James. Here. Sorry. Oh, darn. I got this other thing on. Let me turn it off. It's okay. Sorry about that. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McHatton. Here. And Commissioner Prabor. Here. Well, welcome, everybody. If you will uh, stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Right hand over heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. States of America. And to and the Republic, the Republic. In which it stands, one nation, no. under God, indivisible, God. indivisible liberty, with liberty and, and justice. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, public communications. Let me just read through this. Public communications is a time set aside during the Historic Preservation Commission meeting for members of the public. We do have those. Uh, to address the Historic Preservation Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this muse uh, museum. Or, sorry, I'm reading at, at this meeting. Uh, I, I did, do not believe that I got a museum report. I do want to acknowledge that we have uh, Council Member Wyrick, who is our liaison, and appreciate him being here. Uh, let's go to the minutes then. Wait, do we have anybody from the public that would like to comment? Isn't that next? Or did I oh, jump That's that That's what again? you were just reading. Oh, I jumped it. Public okay. communication. So, so public communications. So we do have uh, speakers. So we would ask you to please come up to the microphone and just uh, announce who you are. So who's going first? Um, so we're up right away. Oh. You are because you're not an item. You're a public communication. Sorry, I forgot to do the... Uh, the, the, the countdown. Plus, it's intriguing because we have no idea what you're going to say. In the meantime, Brian, do we have um, anyone in the screen that's in the waiting room? No one has their hand raised for public comments. Okay, thanks. Okay. Do you need the extra copy? Uh, just as long as staff has them, then I think staff can. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Put in a credit. If any one of you buy copies, I think I did. This says, tell them that they're idiots and they're. That's my copy. There we go. I guess it's not like we've ever had a clock until uh, Brian came in and started training at the last meeting. People Am I supposed to start this or just no. someone else? Yeah. Okay. All right. My name's Anita. I live at the Cottages Among the Flowers at 312 Mallory Way. I, or sorry, 312 Aliso, and I am in Cottage E. So I'm going to reference this report here that you all have a copy of. I'm going to read some. This report was prepared for the purpose of assisting the city of Ojai in their compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act as it relates to historic resources in connection with the proposed additions to buildings known as Cottages Among the Flowers. We'll go on. This report assesses the historical and architectural significance, potentially significant historic properties in accordance with the National Register of Historic Places the California Register and the OHI. So going on here, 
Now these pages that are on here are different from the report you will find at magcloud.com because uh, there are pictures. So the page references don't uh, jive with that one. Page three. Oh, wait, I'm coming back to that later, sorry. So now we go to page five in the handout you have. Third paragraph, perhaps due to the scarcity of affordable renting housing, John Burnham was induced to develop the Cottages Among the Flowers, a small group of homes that he envisioned would be rented by teachers, artists, and families. He apparently was intrigued by the informal arrangement of the Pierpoint Cottages at the east end of the Ojai Valley and decided to create a similar development in the west end to meet the lower, the town center and close to several of the valley private and public schools. So at the bottom of this, in, on October 11th, 1929, the Ohio, now going back, affordable housing all the way back in 1929, rentals being a problem, nothing has changed here as we all know. So October 11th, 1929, Ohio newspaper. Burnham plans cottages of Carmel type, eight or 10 artistically designed structures to be started soon on former Scott property. Next page, third, second paragraph. Harold Burkett of Ventura is the architect who has prepared the design, this is still newspaper quote, who has prepared the designs, the plans calling for very attractive cottages of the Carmel type. The sizes vary from four to six rooms and the rentals plan to be up from $50 upward. <laughs> The, house, the houses will be nicely furnished and will be set in a very pleasing background since the Scott property has many beautiful trees, oaks, peppers, and eucalypti. The cottages will not be placed in a rigid format, very um, rigid, rigid format way, but will be scattered in among the trees in an artistic fashion. Okay, now I switch to report verbiage, not the newspaper. Nine cottages and a garage were completed in January 1930 and named Cottages Among the Flowers. The cottages were built to take advantage of the natural contours of the property and existing landscape elements, including trees and boulders. In addition, many other shrubs and flowers were planted at the time the houses were completed. Each cottage was named after one of these flowers or shrubs. Okay, going on to what is page seven of this at the bottom under potential historic resources. The end of this paragraph says, the buildings are connected by informal winding walkways lined with stone boulders. The site is heavy land, heavily landscaped in a naturalistic and informal way. Approximately 19 mature oak trees are scattered throughout the site. On the west side of the site is a seasonal creek bed. Okay, moving on in here to page nine under, elig or under eligibility of historic resources. The property appears to be potentially eligible, un eligible under NRHP criterion C and California criteria C Oh, wait, sorry, I skipped there. Okay, but I'll go on. As a scarce example of a type of hybrid multifamily housing featuring a number of single family um, detached residences on one lark, lot, architect Harold Burkett designed the development to fit into the informal rural character of Ojai and to provide residents of limited means with an opportunity to rent a fully furnished one or two bedroom modern and up-to-date cottage in a fully landscaped rustic setting. The property is also significant as a design by a well-known Ventura architect, Harold D. Burkett. Going on, although small, he designed them with complete, with complex intersecting roof lines that produced informal. I see my time is ticking away, so I'm going to skip ahead. Yeah. So. And just tell you that they found that the cottages among the flowers, you can read it yourself, are significant, and they they are potentially eligible for National California and Ojai Landmark Register. And Ojai, there's five criteria that it's that they say it fits for. Ohio landmark status. Moving ahead, they never looked at the interior, so I'm going to take the rest to say 
I got wood cabinets that slant in the kitchen that slant to the sink, have drainage channels on them, wood splashboards, two original ice box with original hardware, fireplace with bookcase with decorative cutouts, original hardwood floors. The windows are awesome. You won't see them anywhere in town. Four feet by two feet, screens open this way, windows open that way, you close it, lock it. You won't see them anywhere. Almost all original hardware on them. There is some change. I just think, you know, even, uh, even KCLU had an uh, interview, uh, Caroline Faraday, with the head of one of the directors of the music festival, and he said, Ojai brings creative types. You can look at the history. They've lived in cottages. They've lived in Malvern. It would be a shame to, to destroy that and it not to be a historical spot in Ojai that we, that we as a community protect. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Anita. Uh, Natanya. <coughs> Even when you've done this a lot of times, it goes yeah. Yeah, I, even I, faster. It's been a long time, but I have done much. <laughs> yes, and your name, please? Natanya. Okay. Um, can I just say, I'm, I want to apologize for arriving late. I had massive car trouble, and I didn't mean to interrupt your um, pr presentation. I hope it didn't throw you off. So that's, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, there's a copy. So there's a copy for her. Okay, great. Oh, thank you. So this, this is a small photo, but this is, um, the, I'm, talking about the same site that Anita just talked about, which is um, Cottages Among the Flowers, located at 312 West Aliso Street, just one block up from Bart's Books, and also 412 Mallory Way, which is the cottages at Mallory Way. Um, and so as Anita was talking about, the project is um, talking about renovating these buildings, and we're really asking for preservation and restoration, since they are historically significant um, and we've got um, a lot of data here that we're happy to send and hoping that the Historic Preservation Commission will take a closer look at this project um, because of course when it's gone it's gone forever and we really feel that it's significant for Ojai. It really reflects the character of Ojai and we believe the developer um, may have good intentions, but the building of two-story condominiums just isn't going with the character of Ojai. And I know um, Ojai works really hard to protect that, and that's why we are not Thousand Oaks or Westlake or another L.A. suburban town. Um, so I did just want to uh, read a, a few things that I had collected here. So in January of 2005, the Santa, San Buenaventura Research Associates released a historic resources report on 412 Mallory Way, that's the cottages at Mallory Way, recommending that demolition of the 19 buildings at 412 Mallory Way will have adverse impacts on historic resources as defined by CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act. According to the report, a property must meet at least one of the four criteria that Anita was referencing in order to be eligible for a listing on the California Register of Historical Resources as a historically significant location. And it does, uh, it was recommended that it meets at least two. Um, I don't have a lot of time to go into that, so I won't mention <laughs> that. But again, I do believe this project deserves more time and focus from the commission. And, my understanding is that's what the commission is for, to have a closer look at projects like this that will affect our town. And we're talking about building 65 units and tearing down quite a few buildings and quite a few trees, especially mature oaks. Um, I'm just going to leave you with one more quote from Mayor Blatz. He said, uh, this was of Tower Mina, which was found to be a historic neighborhood. And you know, we really believe that Cottages Among the Flowers and Cottages at Mallory Way also de deserves the same second look as a historic um, area. He, he said of that neighborhood, I realize that everything that we hold precious about our beautiful valley can be very easily lost if we're not very careful. And I feel the same way for neighborhoods like Tower Mina. It doesn't take much to change the character of the neighborhood. It doesn't change much take much to change Ojai, and if we're vigilant, 
and being careful about what development we allow and what architectural standards we put in place. So I hope you will take another closer look at a future meeting at this project because it's very close to happening and of course will be irreversible. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, Natanya. Thank you, Anita. You need to come to the microphone. Be oh, it, it's just so the people who are watching the meeting can hear what you're saying. Okay. Otherwise, they hear. Fur, 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 but I just want to say. This is what I want to say. Yes, is your name, please. Fran. Fran. Many people will be impacted by this decision, and because we are going, hoping that the historical aspect can be looked at because it is viable, it's true. We sell Ojai as being this unique and beautiful and quirky artistic city. And it's not, it is not a suburb and it's not, just please take another look, thank you. Great, thank you, Fran. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, all we can do is listen. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but uh, thank you. Appreciate you bringing that in. If you have anything historical, um, it should go through um, Lucas and Mara, and um, I'm kind of a OI history nut, so. Okay, thank you. We will, uh, any more, anybody online, Brian, that we need to? No, no one has their hand raised for a comment. Okay. Uh, uh, as I said before, museum report rep, uh, I'm sorry I didn't see it. I may have gotten it d lately. Uh, okay, we will move on to the minutes of the May 12th, 2022 meeting. Did anyone have any changes? Oh, uh, I didn't have any changes. No, I don't. No changes. No changes? Okay, uh, I just saw one item that I'm like, wait, did I do that? So, but a minute seemed to be fine to me. Okay, um, a motion to approve, please. I'll make that motion. motion to I second it. Okay, uh, moved by Commissioner McCatton and seconded by Commissioner James. Uh, roll call, please. Akins? Yes. Convery? Yes. James? Yes. McHatton? Yes. Prebor? I wasn't at that meeting, so can I approve? Yeah, I mean, I guess I can't really approve it. Right? Thank you. I wasn't there either, but I approved it. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, so. <laughs> That's right, there were two missing. Sure, okay, if I can then you're both going to show up as abstentions. Hello. Do you have to redo the motion or redo the yeah, second? We have to redo the motion. Okay. Oh. Well, okay. what's what's the procedure if if we didn't attend? Th that you can't you do anything. Yeah. Okay, we abstain. Okay. So, uh, Commissioner McHatton, so we need a motion to approve the minutes coming from I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, I second, a second the motion. Yes. And roll call, please. Akins? Yes. Convery? Yes. And McHatton? Yes. Nice and simple. And then just for the record, Commissioner Prebor and Commissioner James abstain as they were not, not present for that meeting. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Now moving over on to, well, well, let me go back to the beginning because I'm going to miss something I know. Okay, uh, disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. Um, I visited the AT&T building to see the roof line and the proposal. Did you get to see the roof line? Well, I looked up and saw it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you stand across the street, you can see the... I've seen it a lot of times. You can <laughs> see it, yeah. All the time. <laughs> yeah, so okay. that's my disclosure. Thank you. And I did the same thing, McCatton. Okay. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Commissioner James, anything to disclose? Well, I, you know, I go by that every day, but I didn't particularly stop, but I do look at it. Yeah. Okay, and Commissioner Prebor, anything to disclose? No. Okay, great. So I will tell you that uh, I'm at the museum often, and lately I've and I parked my car right between the museum and that building always. And I've looked up there a couple times. I actually walked down the street and looked at it from a different angle and nothing had changed. And however, uh, in reaching out as a part of the downtown historic district, I spoke with, oh, what's her name? I'm Mars here because she would know. So I talked to the representative for Pac Bell, who was listed in as one of the people that was talked to. Uh, what's her name? Do you remember the gal with Pac Bell? That you, Pacific Bell? She's a representative of the owner and not um, a representative of AT&T. Right. And... I don't have her, the application with me. I yeah, I have her number I, in here someplace. Have, I don't have her name. So anyway, just just to disclose that I did have an ex parte conversation with her, uh, but it was in line with talking to her about that parcel as a part of the downtown historic district. But again, she is the of the. There were two people that are were mentioned in that were discussed, and she was the Pac Bell representative. So just disclosing Chris that. Chris Doheny. No, oh, that's he's right an AT and T rep. Yeah, no, it was uh, the the other lady who said, "Yeah, there's really nothing in historic in Ohio." Okay. Oh. She she was very nice though. Okay. So I wouldn't plan on her vote though. Okay. She owns the Pacific Bell. No, she building? is. She, she sounded like she was the attorney for the properties for the Pacific Bell building. Oh. And since we're talking about the that, oh, okay. Um, so staff report. Thank you, um, Chair Aikens and Commissioners. I do have a quick question for Brian. Do you know if we have um, the historic rep in our? Oh, yes, we do. Never mind. Yeah. Um, well Mr. Well. Seibert knows that who who we have in the audience. I just can't see it on the screen. So this project is located at 202 West Ojai Avenue, and as you've heard already, it's the um, Pac Bell building. So what before, what's before you is a request for comment from the Historic Preservation Commission to be passed along to the Planning Commission regarding expansion of, a, of an existing rooftop mechanical equipment enclosure for installation of an unmanned wireless facility. Earlier this year, the Community De Development Department was made aware that in 2018, the subject property was evaluated for inclusion in the National Register of Historic Places and California Register as part of the federal review process. The property was determined not individually eligible for the National Register or California Register, but was determined eligible as a contributor to a historic district with um, with, uh, excuse me, the downtown Ojai Historic District. So with concurrence by the State Historic Preservation Officer as a res, oh, sorry. That's what happens when you read, <laughs> as opposed to just giving a presentation from my brain. Um, as a result, the property is listed in the California Register as a district contributor. So due to the historic status, the city contracted with a, um, historian, uh, GPA consultants, to have them prepare a historic resources report. The, they prepared a, histor a um, draft report, which is included in your packet, and the report concludes that the project would not impact the historic integrity of the building so that it would no longer be eligible for the National or California Register as a contributor that it does comply or it still would comply with the Secretary of the Interior's standards and accompanying guidelines. The project would not cause a substantial adverse change to the significance of historic resources. 
The same conclusion was provided by the executive director of the Ojai Valley Museum in an or informal review that was requested by city staff. The existing rooftop enclosure is about 686 square feet and it's six feet high. It's used for mechanical equipment and the proposal is to enlarge this enclosure such that it would be nine feet high and equal about 819 square feet. The existing total height of the building with the existing enclosure is 32 feet. With the increase in height, it would be 35 feet. The maximum allowable height in this zone, which is a C1 zone, is 35 feet. So it would not be um, in excess of that. The next step for this process is to take the comments from the Historic Preservation Commission to the Planning Commission. And those comments would be regarding the packet that you have, which includes the Historic Resources Report that was prepared by GPA consultants. And then the conditional use permit part of the project would be forwarded to the city council for also for um, review and consideration. So tonight we have a member of GPA consultants to answer any questions as well as staff. Right, and we also have the applicant here, Chris Tohini, as well as Tyler Kent. Thank you. And the audience, virtual audience. Okay, um, so I, I guess I have a question to um, staff before we, we get to the historic resources report. Uh, we as an HPC, are, uh, our focus is on the historical po portion, the considered historical po portion of that complex, which is the one-story building and the later addition that took place. We are not looking at the what is um, inside the now the seem to be or possible nine foot wall as a part of the the equipment that's up there. That is a planning commission and maybe a city council issue. Is that correct? That's correct. You're not looking at what's inside. You're looking at the structure and the re historic resources report that was prepared, which is also dealing with the structure and then the the integrity of the structure as a um, contributor to the historic district. Okay, yes. As well as consistency with the Secretary of Interior Standards. That's really the evaluation that was provided by the Historic Resources Report and the evaluation and the conclusions that were drawn from that. We'll get to that part. He had some in interesting observations in light of another project we had earlier. Um, okay, so um, I, I understand that uh, I'm not sure if it was both of you, but you were able to g gain a tour of the facility um, internally and then go to the roof? Yes, no? No, no we have not been inside, well, excuse me, I have not been inside the facility. <laughs> I've toured uh, it, but and Mara has not. And oh, okay, so That was Mike. early on, I mean, we're talking 2020. Right, I was gonna say, nor has the historian. G GPA consultants also was reviewing the integrity of the exterior of the structure. Okay, so the person I talked to was Michelle Callens. And I mentioned, you know, I'd really love to take a tour. And she's like, yeah, that ain't ever gonna happen. You have no idea what kind of sensitive information, uh, equipment is in there and who it takes care of. So yeah, it's not gonna happen. So that was one petition too far. <laughs> but she was very nice uh, towards the end. Um, okay. Towards the end, I like that part. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're Ojai, you know, we, <laughs> we have four square miles and 8,000 residents and yep. we're not, her example was, have you never been to downtown Oakland? <laughs> I have. Um, so it, w it was a good, interesting discussion. Um, so uh, questions from the uh, commission members uh, for both, do we want, is there a presentation by um, PG, uh, GPA or they're just here if we have questions and therefore we don't go on, we can ask the questions to them now or do we, is there a presentation we, sh we usually w when staff makes their report, we only ask staff questions. So then if there's a presentation, we have the presentation go and then we only ask the presenters questions regarding what they proposed. And then we get to, I, my, 
mine's brain dead, so I have this nice post-it. So Dear GPA, um, we do have people here, or people or person here from GPA Consultants, and they're here to answer questions. Um, if you have questions, I do not believe that they're going to be, we, we did not discuss them making a presentation of the historic resources, resources report. Um, so we're still, as staff, still available for questions, but of course, um, GPA is also. Yeah. Right, and, and from a processing standpoint, procedure standpoint, it is the Q&A at this point, and then we would open it up for public comment, and at yes. that point, then uh, the audience, including GPA, representatives of GPA, as well as the representatives of the applicant, could speak on this project. And be asked questions. Correct. Yeah, I just didn't want to get there too fast. Mm -hmm. Trying to follow my cue, cue card down there. Okay. Um, so questions from the commission uh, to either staff or GPA. Yes. Jenny, look like your hand's up. You're on mute. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, no? Okay. I don't have a question. No, I don't have a specific question. Um, I do. I have a couple okay. questions. Okay. Yes, uh, Commissioner I don't Conley. have any particular questions about the report, the, the historic report, because it's a historic report and all the information is here. I do have questions about the construction, because that's really what we're talking about. And we're talking about the screen. I mean, it's referred to, I believe, as a screen in this thing. It enclosure. looks like a stucco wall, a white stucco wall, so I'm assuming it will be the same structure, only three feet higher. And I don't see that. I didn't see it spelled out in here. Maybe it's buried somewhere. Well, in your, in your packet, is, yeah. can I respond? Is that sure, sure. Now? Okay. Yeah, so please. In your packet, in um, I believe it's attachment A, mm -hmm. there is a photo simulation of, of what it will look like, and you're absolutely correct. It's the same thing, but larger yeah. um, in, in area as well as height. Yeah, and I think it's important to have the applicant respond to that specifically because I think they have specific yeah. uh, materials that they would need to use so that the... Yeah. Actually, Mara, can you tell me where that photo yes. is? Because I, I couldn't tell which was the simulation and which one wasn't. It's attachment A, page 57 of 79. Yeah, okay. so it's this so one it's here. So it's way back 57. there. 57, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and got it. Oh, I see. Yeah, it looks, I mean, you know, they drew it higher in white. So um, the, I guess the question, you know, we're not technicians. We're about the historic preservation. So would it be the same materials or is it some upgraded and 2022, you know, space age material designed to protect the new, the new equipment that's going in there? You know, is it, some, is it some different thing? And because Brian's reference from the woman that you talked to about how it's high tech and secretive, is there some high-tech secretive thing going on the roof that we are not aware of in mm -hmm. this proposal? I, I, I agree with Lucas that the um, that question would be best served by the um, AT&T representative. Okay, that's the, like the Good general point. understanding. Good point. So my, yeah, the general question is, will it look the same? Is it a special material? And really, you know, it fits into the code of 35 feet, and so, you know, we're not code enforcers, we're not planning commissioners, so I felt comfortable with that. But I did want to make sure that the material was very similar and not something unusual that we couldn't see in the renderings. And then my next question is what happens in three years when there's a new iPhone and everybody needs three more feet on top of that, you know? Where is it going to go? So there is there a plan in the future? for this type of situation? Uh, two questions. So I think that second question is also would be for, for AT&T, but certainly yeah. if there were any changes to what is being reviewed and considered now, it, another review and consideration would be before you and the Planning Commission and the City Council. Yeah, I just wanna, I guess my concern is if they're going to expand it, is this a Band-Aid for something that's gonna come back again, and is this, you know, I don't, I'm really uncomfortable with tall buildings in Ojai because the point of the valley and the point of the code that we have is to create, protect our views, you know, protect the mountain views. And when people start layering and layering, that's it, one thing leads to another. And there are already several projects trying to get pushed forward that are, you know, trying to get variances on our code height limitations. So that was, it's really an issue for me. And I, 
I know this fits into the code height limitation, but is there a plan going forward when there needs to be another expansion? Well, another, if it were a height expansion, it would require a variance because this is yeah. the maximum height. Yeah, exactly. Is the, I mean, what are we talking about? And these guys are pretty savvy about their technical stuff, and they know what's coming down the road, so I have a feeling there's some information out there. I don't know if we'll get it tonight, but I would be curious. Should we go to them and then get that answer? Well, Any questions? Um, well, I guess my my um, question right now is: Is this coming? Sorry, actually, a little Zoom call, but it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Is that Valerie? Are you speaking? Oh, with? I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, again, this this is on a building that's supplemental to the portion uh, to the uh, single story level that's old, historic in nature. Um, is it coming before us because this is in close proximity, proximity to a historic building because this is in, mm -hmm. attached somewhat in a, to a historic building? Um, I just want to understand, it, 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 the reason I'm, I'm asking it is what they're proposing, again, looking at from me is not touching anything that's historic and not making any changes that would be contrary to what currently exists in and further detracting from the historic building. Confused yet? No, I, can I answer that a little bit? Sure. Please? Um, when you have a historic building and this is a contributing building, no matter what additions you add, Indeed. it affects the historic nature of the building. You know, a different roof line, which is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just the general overview of additions to contributing and historic buildings that we're, why we're addressing this. Okay. That, that you stole right? my just thunder. Getting, that was yeah. basically what I was going to say, yeah. yeah. It follows in the same similar fabric to a previous project that was seen here. This follows in that same format in terms of comments, and, and those comments are then being forwarded to the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just building my armory on questions that come from other sources. So I appreciate that very much. Uh, one, one interesting story is on page three of 79 up at the top under the uh, uh, construction history, if you go all the way down to 2015, it says in-kind roof replacement. Uh, it may have been seven years ago that uh, I came to the museum one day and there was a big, one of those big giant bins over it. And all I saw was these old roof tiles flying through the air and landing in that bin. Oh. And I'm like, yeah. wait, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's on our historic, not landmark, but historic building, what's going on? And so uh, they, had talk, they had talked to the city, they had got a permit, uh, me and wanting to keep anything that's potentially, uh, potentially historic, we now have a pile over at the museum of those tiles. Um, but it just seemed, it, I was aghast seeing these tiles coming off the yeah. uh, Pack Bell building, the, you know, the uh, old building, flying into a dumpster with no care at all. Mm -hmm. Just was counter. So that was their in-kind roof replacement of 20, 2015 story. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner McCatton, yes. I have a, so it's currently 32 and it's going to be 35, so we're only talking three feet yes Is that there's a three feet uh increase yeah okay so because when i look at um when i'm looking at page 56 of 79 and you can see the increase tall and then when you look at the one that before the it, it you can't see it at all it just is it just the angle of the photograph because Where's the other one? I just had it, but it's um, it's it's we're talking three feet. That's that's the whole thing, correct? Yes. Okay. That was my question. Um, I have I have another question too, please. Which is I'm looking at uh, the timeline, and it says 1990 construction of the six by six foot roof platform for new antenna. 
and that hasn't been touched since 1990. Because in this timeline, it's got a new 1990 route, new antenna, and then oh, 1991 installation of new screening on roof. So that would have been the wall that we're looking at that's up there now, the stucco wall, 91, right? Right. So I think that's like 31 years. Quickly math, right? So in 31 years, there hasn't been any any addition or any work done on this situation on the roof. Am I reading this right? <laughs> oh, and then 96, installation of new AC equipment and screen, but that's not on the roof. Right, I, okay. I don't believe that, the, that this enclosure has been yeah. changed since okay. that time. Were well, it kind of helps me to understand what the future brings, you know, because to, to my earlier question, um, and not wanting to go higher than 35 feet if it's been 30 years since they've had some kind of um, revision, you know, asked for a revision in 30 years. That's not onerous at all. I mean, I don't know anything about antennas, so who knows what's going on up there. But, um, you know, I just uh, I'm concerned about revisiting it in a way that will affect the skyline in the future. And that's a future conversation. I just wanted to get it on the record. So I did find it. It is page 16 of 79 versus page 56 of 79. Is, is that just the angle with maybe the tree that's different? Because you can't see it at all when you see the Jim and Rob's um, picture yeah. and then you see the Jim and Rob's on this one and it's really tall over it. I, it's just Maybe it's just from a different... No, hey, Gina, I think it's the tree, because when I went there today, there's a big sycamore tree, and it's full of leaves, so you can't really see it. Like, it really serves to block the, um, this building at addition. And that when you're looking at, on page 15 of 79, the tree doesn't have any leaves, so it must have been shot. That picture was taken in the fall. Um, but that tree does serve to conceal the... Um, the addition, the 1996 or whatever year it was addition. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner James, did you have questions? You're muted. Uh, it seems like there is no change to the historic, no bad things about the historical issues of it. It's just like Cindy says, what is it that they have in there? Go ahead. So what else did you have, Valerie? That's, that's it. That's all I had to say. Oh, okay. It just broke up right at the oh, end okay. of the sentence. I'm sorry. Okay. I was muting it again, but. Okay. Um, let's see. Other questions in kind. Um, yeah, again, um, you know, the building is used uh, because the, uh, you know, they come in and they park their vehicles outside frequently, um, and then they disappear and never to be seen again. Um, wow. So, well, <laughs> I go in the office. I don't stand there and, and, uh, and wait. Um, they, they've been uh, good, real good about taking care of it. We had some, they have a uh, a gate there for a while it was being jumped and there was a encampment behind that gate and so they uh, worked uh, you know we made it a concern because again there that's a property that's very close to the museum and we'd have that issue that they worked very nicely with the museum as well as the authorities in the city and to, to stem that issue and so yeah I think they've been good neighbors Good. Um, well. I think the only question that I haven't had heard the answer to is, will it be the same material? Are they going to tear down the current six-foot wall and build a nine-foot wall? Or are they going to add three feet onto the current wall? Will it be stucco and it'll be the same color, so it'll just be identical? That's what the picture looks like. I just want to confirm it since it's a picture. So I think if we can open this up then um, yeah. for public comment, then we can ask then the commissioners can ask the um, applicant. Okay. okay, so at this time then we'll open open the hearing for public comment. Uh, Brian, do we have 
individuals who would like to uh, speak with us. Um, Chris had his hand raised at one point. I don't know if that's the at t representative, but no one has their hand raised currently. Okay. At, at this point, just so I can educate the folks that are, that are out there watching going, I had my hands raised the whole time. You never called on me. We have no clue who is out there. Okay. His hand is raised again right now. Okay. So we do have a public comment from him then. Okay. And Chris, well, Chris can tell who, who, us who that person is. Hi, this is Chris Tohini. Um, I'm listed as the applicant on behalf of uh, SmartLink Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for uh, inviting us tonight. I just wanted to uh, just address quickly the couple questions that were raised um, regarding the new wall. And uh, it will be a, a new wall that is that is developed in place of the existing one now. And um, it's designed with a special FRP material, uh, sort of a fiber uh, composite material that is designed to allow the antennas to uh, reflect or provide their service through the wall without interference. Um, and the type of material is allows for um, design and uh, what, what's the right word texture to uh, to meet the existing uh, appearance of the of the building so it will match in color and texture as it is now and um, we also uh, our proposal includes uh, six foot antennas so that we would uh, stay within the 35 feet height limit um, ATT does have also the options of proposing eight foot antennas, but in this project, we're proposing six foot antennas to meet that, meet that uh, height limit. Thanks. So, so Chris, uh, at the, what is the height of the walls that are on, you know, around it? The top of the walls? Is it, is it 35 or? No, the um, the new walls that will be constructed are, I believe, it's nine feet from the existing rooftop. Uh, but the increase will be an additional, as you noted in your summer report, of three feet. Right, but that doesn't. I have no idea how high the current rooftop is, so oh. I don't know what the the base is to add the nine nine feet to it. So, just a question. I was just trying to figure out if you know if you were. No, that's a fair question. At the, let me see. It's probably in the schematics, but it's on page yeah. three of seventy nine, Brian. Three of seventy nine. Six times six, and they're going to add three feet, so it'll be nine. nine yeah, feet. yeah, I get that. I just don't know what oh. the base is. If the, if the yeah, base yeah, is twenty six, yeah, yeah. oh. and they're putting another nine it's feet at, on, uh, it's at twenty six feet. Is the top of the existing parapet? Right okay. Now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, so the top of the wall will be equal with the top of the antenna. Correct. That's really my question. Okay, great. So, uh, Chris, anything else you wanted to share with us in your public comments? Um, not right now. Uh, we will be, we'll be doing the, the full presentation next week at the at the public hearing. Um, but That's with the than, planning I mean, commission. Um, yes. Good. They're good people. Yeah. We um, like them. They like us. <laughs> I, actually, I just I wanted to make a comment. It made me uh, think of it when there was a mention of not nothing being historic, and you know that kind of there's a hesitancy about historic buildings because of the pro the alleged process that hinders things. But what I've really seen in the last year is the planning commission when they have. Um, positive input from our historic commission, the planning commission is much more likely and much quicker to respond in a positive way to the project when they have input from the historic preservation commission. So it keeps, actually keeps things moving a little bit faster that I have witnessed in the past year with three different projects. So I wanted to just put that out there for OI to hear. Hmm. And I was sincere when I said th they are complementary to our work. I mean, yeah. S Steve, Commissioner Quillis, he has recognized yeah. 
uh, at the meetings the input from the Historic Preservation Commission, yeah. and, and they appreciate that. So, so hopefully, Chris, when you go to the Planning Commission with, um, you know, with information from tonight, it will smooth that whole process for you, I hope. Yeah, thank you. Uh, definitely, I think it, it's good to hear the comments tonight and um, assist us, you know, moving forward for next week. Okay. Um, I, 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 uh, there are GPA p people that are on this phone call? Yes, there are. Okay. Uh, again, to the public out there, we have no idea who's out there in Never Never Land. So um, I do, do I, I was telling someone today that I love, love, love historic resources reports. I love being able to go through uh, and go all the way back and see that uh, Dean Vadney, who I talked with two days ago, uh, signed this building permit application in 1975, mm -hmm. and uh, he's still around, and uh, we're, we're still talking to him about things uh, involved in the city. So uh, flipping through this, uh, I thought it was interesting that in 1955, something happened, but we don't know what it was, <laughs> according to the report. So. The fact that everything that you were able to come up with all, the the city and in your report come up with all the other supplementary uh, information was just fabulous. Again, I'm a kid in a candy store when I get these things. Uh, then also, uh, so you know, uh, all historic resource reports are then forwarded to the uh, Ojai Valley Museum, uh, and then we have that information available there. Uh, in our library for people to to come in and look at so uh, that will be the next place that the historic resource reports go and it goes to them in a digital uh, format uh, if they need to prove that otherwise we have a digital archive that we've been building that we have available so just to pitch in for my other hat um, so thank you I found uh, interesting some of the the discussion about the arches on the uh, building and I think that's all I have to say. Do you have anything else, Commissioner Cumbry? No, I don't have anything. Uh, Commissioner Prebor? No, uh, no comments. Okay, Commissioner McCatton? No, no comments. Okay, Commissioner James? Nope, okay, she is. I saw her shake her head. No comments. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Okay, so. What are, what are you looking for from us? Do we need a motion then to approve the historic resources report and to not move a, ahead? Yeah, not a motion, but comments. So I know there's no comments from, from a majority of the commissioners, but we've already seen some of the comments come forward from the commission early on in the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, but focused really on the historic resources report, I think Chair Eakins, to your point, talking about it, Vice Chair Convery talking about it as well. Um, if there are any additional follow-up comments from the rest of the commission, I think that now is the time because we'll put that together in a summary for planning uh -huh. commission uh, moving forward. And okay. comments can be positive yeah. as well. I mean, comments yeah, either are way. positive, negative, yeah. uh, critiques. Well, to, you know, as we're wrapping it up, my overall comment is that, I, you know, I think it's a positive report. It's a positive choice. The materials sound very thoughtful and... You know, I think they're certainly working with the city, so I support it for the Planning Commission. Yeah, very complete. Um, Jenny, do you have any comments as far as the no, historic I, resources? I, you know, I support it as well. I don't see I don't see any negative issues. Um, if I mean, if that's, I feel mm -hmm. like I feel like we're always looking for something negative, but. <laughs> You know that concerns us, but it seems as though you know it. Nothing concerns me. Great, thank you, uh, Commissioner McCat and Gina. Anything as I'm, regards to the HRR? No, I mean I'm happy to have another um, another contributing property in our downtown historic district with a full HRR. It's it's nice. It's like you said, it tells the full story, and we can see the whole history of it. Um, but I have I have no further comments on the um, proposal. I I mean we're talking three feet. I think it's thoughtful. I, I think you know it stays within uh, perimeters of, of what we're looking for. 
Great. I mean, saying that, I wouldn't want every single building behind the arcade to be at 35 feet, <laughs> but you know, um, it is to uh, to to the the law of um, Ohio's in it. So I'm, I'm fine with it. And you know, Gina, this is a reason for this 35 feet. A lot of the 35 feet requests or the higher requests, the only reason is they want a vaulted bedroom ceiling or a balcony or something. You know, there's an actual reason for this height request, a valid reason. So that's why I said Correct. It. I just, you know, yeah. I think that um, the main thing that we talked about with even non-contributing properties in the downtown historic district was just making sure that the arcade doesn't get overwhelmed. And, and I, you know, this is not part of the arcade and, and um, this is, um, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with this, but I just think that that is something that's always in my head is um, making sure that the arcade doesn't get overwhelmed. And I think Thank what you. Cindy said is a good point that it's functional. Mm -hmm. And and that, you know, definitely falls into a different category than um, I think that's an important point to make for for Lucas. Yeah, that because it's functional, it makes more sense. Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner James, any comments on the historic resources? I think I already said that like, it meets all the standards and that you need for a historical building. I don't see that it goes against anything. And really there's hardly anything more to say about it because it's not very distinctive and it is functional. It's a functional building. Great, thank you. Um, I think you got our comments. Once again, we'll send our comments off to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, in, in between going to our, before going to our, our, our next item, I would just like to uh, introduce, we have Epi with us. Good evening, uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Um, I'm the Deputy City Attorney. Uh, Epi Margolin. I usually I deal with the uh, the Planning Commission, but uh, I think I've sat in on one of these before. Um, but it's uh, it's good to meet everyone again virtually. Great, right. and very nice to have you. I talked with Matt on the way here, and he he said that you would be joining us, and and we appreciate that. And yes, you have been with us before, and we appreciated you being here for that. Okay, uh, what's the next thing? Move it. Item number three here. Item number three. Item number three. Okay. Do I have a staff report? Uh, let's let me give kind of a uh, a lean into the discussion for tonight. For okay, I'm interested. The progress report for the the local downtown historic district ad hoc committees. So good evening. My name is Lucas Seibert, Community Development Director here with the City of Ojai. The item before the commission is really a progress report. Um, an update for each of those ad hoc committees that have been doing the due diligence and and um, doing their, their research uh, regarding the downtown historic district. Uh, also, with that, if, if you're looking at the recommendations, it's a review, update, and discuss. That's one. Two is to discuss a recommendation to the City Council by the Historic Preservation Commission to amend, potentially amend, requesting amendment to the municipal code to allow properties identified as contributing within the lo local downtown historic district to be considered for entering into a Mills Act with the city without being required to provide a historic resources report. And that's, we're looking at for updates regarding both ad hocs, but also for a discussion piece and whether or not there is consensus from the commission um, to move forward with that as a discussion piece, as a recommendation to City Council. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's, the, that's the end of the presentation here. If the commission has any questions, sorry, that was an odd transition, but uh, if the commission has any questions of staff, I could certainly answer them. I, Mara's here as well. Uh, any questions of staff? Don't see any no. hands raised. Uh, I, I, again, I would just like to thank you both uh, in working with you and getting answers. Um, as for an update, let me just give you uh, a bit of an update on uh, where I am in the reaching out to the public. Um, I do appreciate, it was kind of uh, appreciate get, getting, the <laughs> getting the form from Matt to where 
people uh, indicated their support or their non-support. Remember, we're not using the V word. Um, and uh, the, uh, the nice lady who I talked to regarding the PAC bill, uh, building, I told her, and she asked if, uh, uh, if I would actually send her the information that I'm sending to the rest of the parcel owners, and I said I would. I said, <laughs> if you're looking, when you get the support or no support letter, don't be surprised that it's not a highly technical document. It's support or no support. It's pretty basics. I just wanted it <laughs> before she died um, laughing. Uh, we are a small community. We try to get things done in the Ohio way. Um, I have been reaching out to, I, I had a brief uh, uh, week and a half that uh, uh, I tell people I was meant I was back to normal uh, through my dear sweet almost four year old grandson who spent a few hour, a couple hours with my wife. He then transmitted what I call the uh, Manhattan Beach preschool cold and cough. I know them as summer coughs, and so that took me down for about a week and a half. We love him though. <laughs> um, so I have uh, reached out. Uh, in the tally, there are 89 parcels altogether. There are 56 votes in those parcels, again, going back to the guidance that's in the code. Uh, so of those, we need to have one half of that plus one. Um, so I'm guessing we would need to get 29 yes votes. Um, I have contacted an, a number of individuals here uh, I have contacted um, and and the interesting part is uh, the boards if you don't get the board right you're going to wait a whole nother month so I've contacted six boards uh, in our community I have contacted uh, I'm contacting a city entity we'll get to that in a mo uh, moment and a county entity we have a city entity that owns six or seven parcels Gina would know perhaps better than me we have a county entity that owns one parcel that's the library and so the county librarian is now figuring out for us who would be the proper entity at the county in order to give that support or no support support for us uh, contacted eight individuals they uh, most of them are actually uh, close by some of them are in other states other individuals one group, and we have the one signature from Tony Thatcher that we got uh, a month ago. Um, it has, I uh, told Lucas that it has given me a new appreciation on projects when people are like, hey, how come you're not doing anything? And Lucas is like, how come you're not calling me? And that's kind of how I felt. <laughs> we, any number of emails and uh, communications that have gone out, some people have been wonderful. Many of the boards are, our, our local community boards are wonderful. Uh, again, having talked with six boards uh, in our community that own parcels, interesting number. So uh, all the different ones. So it, it has been good. Um, I think the, I talked to Lucas on the indication of where we're going to be right now is getting information out. Uh, not really asking for a where they stand because that would be uh, inappropriate and unfair and I think unwise because we want to get that information out to them and and in information helps uh, solve questions and uh, improper posts and and that kind of thing so people have been very good at uh, listening and receiving and giving me their e email address uh, and just trying to get some of them to return their phone calls to make sure they, they got what they got. Um, so I think it's good. What I said to Lucas is I think by the meeting a month from now, again, for me, all those boards will have met uh, except for one. I think they're meeting on the 14th. Uh, they couldn't do it this month because uh, partially I just found out about it and two of their leader is going out of town. So. Um, so another month, I think uh, we will have a good indication of where we are and, and where we are proceeding. Um, I have not had anyone that was irate, uh, anyone that was, uh, the <laughs> again, she's a really nice lady, but the only one that said, yeah, that's not going to happen was the Pac Bell lady. 
because she comes she doesn't live in the area she comes from a whole different vantage point she's a big picture kind of person and we only landmark arcades here or facades i mean is what she said so <laughs> after we stopped arguing with each other a little bit then we got nice i kept standing up for our city <laughs> Why do you think all those people keep coming to us from L.A.? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Uh, yes, Gina, do you have a question for me? Uh, no, I just, I'm going to go next. No. Oh, okay, of course. Go, go right ahead. So, um, I uh, just took my summer vacation, and I'm back now, and I am working on um, the slide presentation, trimming it down. I should have it done um, by the beginning of next week. So hopefully for all of the different presentations that Brian and Cindy and all of us go to, we will have a um, updated. It's done. We, we happen to like our slideshow because uh, when we went through it, it was like, no, we want to keep that one. We want to keep that one. So um, it's, it's not going to be too much of a trim, but I'd like to, to um, try to at least get uh, you know five, six, seven minutes off the, the back end. So hopefully that will work. And my dog might start barking any second now. Well, my apologies. Okay. <laughs> um, I, and um, that's all I have. I'm, I'm just, I think that I'm, I'm going to, I'm changing my, my tune. I know that uh, it's not going to happen by August. It's just not feasible. It's not, it's not going to happen. So instead of it being 100th anniversary, it's going to have to be something like, the first year of Ojai's second century, <laughs> you know, it's going to, we're going to have to dink that a little bit to uh, our 101st year. But um, I think that due diligence just takes time and, you know, we're, we're working our way through it. And if it's, um, if it's the 101st year, it's going to be the 101st year. So that's what we're working on. Gina, um, are you creating a PDF of the slideshow that we can send to property owners that we can email to them? I, I don't know. It would be a, a PDF. I think it'll be um, like a YouTube video or something like that. For, for my the, property you know, owners, it's up on our it's up on a YouTube page. Well, for that's, my people, the people I know, if you could download it as a PDF, then it's. I don't a, think it's, a slideshow can. Yeah, can a slideshow. Yeah, can be I, mean, a PDF? I do it. But it's like a deck, you know, like create it like a deck. I don't know what format you made it in, but PowerPoint or whatever. But I pretty, anyway, we can talk about it later. But I'm just saying for who I'm talking to, it's much easier for them to have a PDF sent to them that they can click through. Because if they have to go to another link, like that one step, people, you know, they falter. So maybe we can talk about this. Um, okay, this is done in yeah. Keynote, but I can save it in oh, the other yeah, you place. you can definitely do it in Keynote. You can download it as a PDF in Keynote, no problem. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool, because that would make it a lot more straightforward to get to people. They just get it. They can thumb through it on their phone like that without having to go anywhere else. You know, just I want to make it just as easy as possible. Okay. Yeah, that'll be... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think that'd be wonderful for me. Um, it, I just, uh, as a part of the, uh, I attach three things or include three things. One is the link that that I had got from you. I get the the thirty questions, the the map, and also get the uh, the form for uh, supporting or non supporting. So I send that out to individuals. Um, and the link was better originally. The first couple ones I sent a, an attachment, and sending an attachment to that was uh, long. Having the link for uh, the people uh, seemed to work. Um, so, so I ask, ask a favor of Ginny uh, and Cindy, maybe Brian too. Um, I know Ginny and Cindy just happen to know a lot of uh, property owners and a lot of the, um, you know, longtime people here in Ojai, I would love to, before the slideshow, um, like let's say Brian is presenting in front, for, front, front of a board, to before it starts to just have quotes that just come up, you know, just um, in support of, of uh, Ojai and, and the downtown historic district. Um, 
from people who are in support of this that aren't property owners that maybe don't have a vote, but but have a you know their stakeholders just the same. And and uh, I think that would be nice just to kind of like the movie theater before the the movie before the previews start when it has just trivia pop up, sort of like that, where it's just like quotes from from people in um, our community that um, show how they feel about 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 our downtown historic district. Uh, testimonials. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, if I, if I had something like that, I would bring my laptop and put it on there as kind of a screensaver. Uh, the uh, one group that I had a board meeting with um, already, uh, managed to catch them beforehand, was the friends, and they gave me 20 minutes. And so um, that's why I'm trying to get the information out to them in time for, and that's part of the reason that the Art Center is, will be held in July, is I, I wasn't going to be able to get them the information so, soon enough for them to digest. So I'm trying to get the information out to them early enough that they have had the opportunity to look through everything uh, in the detail they wanted and have questions prepared uh, when I get my 20 minutes or whatever's allocated. Yeah, I was thinking um, this would be while everybody is sitting down, while everybody is still getting their cup of coffee, you know, while it hasn't started yet, just to, like you said, like a, a screensaver sort of thing, where it's just kind of filtering through some testimonials about, um, you know, in support of our downtown historic district. I don't know if, um, I think if, if anybody can get those, it would have to, if you can send it, it wouldn't be to me, probably it would have to go through the city back to me. So we'd stay within our ad hocs. Hey, Gina, right? another Lucas? thought, and this is coming from property owners who asked me, why is this something we want? Um, some of the information that we've discussed during this entire course is how this benefits other towns. You know, I'm not going to pop off about a bunch of towns right now because I don't have the list in front of me, but maybe that's in a, you could have some testimonials, but maybe you want to say, you know, historic towns are worth, are, have an increase in real estate value that's whatever it is, 8% higher than historic towns that aren't historic you know like bullet points of information about other towns and how it's benefited them and name some of those towns you know how how much more valuable they are and how it benefits property owners now, maybe that's all on the deck but i felt like if we reference other towns and how they've benefited instead of just how it works for ojai then people can go oh yeah i know that place that's pretty good maybe just a thought um thank so you so one of the groups that actually was uh, Mayor Sticks put me in touch with uh, a friend of happened to be visiting from Coopville, which is up on a Whidbey Island, and they had gone through this whole process. Uh, and so uh, they uh, sent me all kinds of information mm -hmm. from all of their, all, a, a full range of their community mm -hmm. uh, on what they went through in order to uh, get a downtown historic district and because they were right there on the ocean to have a marine sanctuary as well as uh, farmland, uh, rangeland that was, uh, they were trying to prevent from going to condos. So, so how, and if we could get information about, from them about how it benefited the property owners, that's uh -huh. the kind of thing I was thinking. I just had some friends and they have a house in Alaska, a little town in Alaska so they go to historic places like Ketchikan and, you know, they could get information about places like that, how it benefits the businesses. And the businesses are much more robust in a historic town like Ketchikan than they are in a his town that I don't even know the name of because it's not historic. Okay. No, I'll, I'll go back and look at the information they sent yeah. me. And, and, uh, I don't know. And I mean, it's it just a do. thought, you know, it's up for discussion. Yes, Jenny. Um, I, just, I just have a question about... Um, you know, you're talking about the property owners and then Cindy just mentioned the business owners, which are typically different people, right? Yes. I, I... So, so as, as a business owner who doesn't own the building and, you know, my, my building and all of them around me were bought by a big corporate investment firm. So, you know, do, do those people, are those people voting? Or I, I'm just, I'm questioning no, I, like 
Just clarify yeah, go ahead, Gina. What clarification of the process. Okay. No, the um the group that bought the properties um, that used to be owned by Khalib will have one vote, but the vote will be uh, more likely to be a positive vote if um or you know if they understand that the tenants that they have in these stores in a um in in other cities like Cindy said are stronger are longer lasting tenants are happier tenants um if they are able to access uh, mills act funds to make repairs where you know they can keep good tenants in i mean there's there's so many benefits to keep good tenants um uh, property owners don't want that turnover and they don't want to you know have empty spaces or anything like that so or or um end up with tenants that that um they, you know that like it just keep going out of business or something they want ones that are stronger and, and in a historic district if they can be shown that that is what the case is in in uh, little small towns around the country they might be more likely to support a downtown historic or local downtown historic district we're already a state so you know and and to have those benefits so they have one sense? they have one vote Correct. but there are five businesses in their space correct they so may, they, they may even have five businesses on five separate parcels they have one parcel they bought one parcel from haled that happens to have five spaces so it's five businesses i mean i don't know how many other situations there are like that but that is one situation where it's in the arcade it's one counts as one piece but there's five businesses so i'm just curious about um we're doing something we're working with lucas on um a merchant issue and you know drafting a letter about what what we would like them to support and you know does it matter that me as a business and the, the people that own the ice cream and the people next to me does it matter that they support it what we're doing like would that be something that would yes. be interesting is for us to draft yes. you know a letter of support and have business owners who don't own property to sign this letter yeah absolutely or does that not really matter yeah i'm just curious so so they don't Heather. have so yeah so going through so when uh when the ad hoc committee finished uh we had this amazing google sheets document that was very in detailed and in depth and then uh, so from the, from Mara, from Lucas, from Sherry, and then on the other side of that is the county, we have who the property owners are uh, by parcels. And so figuring out exactly how many parcels we had and how many votes that took place was something that I worked with Cheryl on uh, when Cheryl was still here. And so when I finally got the information and was able to reconcile it, I, I was on the phone, we both had the Google Sheets open and we went through it line by line by line and we determined uh, between her and myself who got votes. Because again, if you here's the kicker. So if you own uh, three parcels and two of those parcels are in one name, but one of those parcel is in, has another owner to it, or if you're involved with three parcels, then you actually can end up with two different votes because they are not the same parcel owner. Okay, so that's one of the kicks in uh, in in two different areas. That was a bit confusing, so I actually call, called Matt Summers and went over it with him. So, so from a uh, support or no support uh, in sending the documents to them, that only goes to the parcel owners. However, right. you know who. who what are we seeing? We're seeing if you have a downtown historic district, it's going to bring business in, and that business is not going to come to the parcel owners other than the rents 
which I don't think are directly related to the income part, but maybe somewhat, but that's gonna come to the business owners. And so we very much, personally, I very much care about the, what the business owners are saying. They're the ones that see people every day. They're the ones that see each other every day. The business owners are the ones that are able to pay rent when their businesses are robust and landlords care about that. So to have business owners go back to their landlords and say, I support this, I've studied this, I've learned this, it's gonna benefit my business, I'm gonna sell more, I'll pay my rent more easily. And you know, as prices increase, I'll be able to keep up with that. That's really important to business owners. If I, I mean, to landlords, if I owned a property, and if my tenant came to me and said, "I'm in favor of this for these reasons because it will help me be a better tenant," that right. would interest me as a property owner. So I think you're telling the owners that it will help you, as business owners, to be better and more successful tenants. And Ojai is, you know. It's a different place now, but there have been a lot of ups and downs financially here. You know, a lot of businesses come and go. And it's still a struggle, as you know. You have a business here. No matter what, it's always a struggle. And having an ice cream store is really busy, but how many ice cream cones do you have to sell when your rent goes up? You know, a lot of ice cream cones, $3. So I think, you know, having Cody Berg and you and, and Canyon Supply say this will help us is meaningful. Exactly. Yeah, I, just, I think that I think that we would need the right language because yeah. you know one side of me is saying is thinking that it, and and I guess you you two um, you know Cindy and Brian will know because you're talking to the owners, but I the biggest fear for the for the renters, the business owners who are renting from the property owners is the increases in rents, which has already started. So, you know, I wonder like what the fine line is between this is gonna make us successful, therefore it's gonna make you successful, but what makes you as a business owner successful is that you get more rent. I mean, I'm not sure they really care think, whether it's, it's, it's me or it's someone else. Do you know what I mean? Not I'm that direct, curious. Jenny. It's not that direct. You get more rent. When they have a business, when you're a landlord to a business that has a steady, you know, income and good customers and a solid base, it doesn't mean they're going to turn around and raise the rent. They're going to raise the rent no matter what. You know, whether it's historic or not, if they want to raise the rent, they're going to raise it. But having a historic district creates a more um, attractive area for better I don't know how to describe it, you know, for a different type of customer to come in who is possibly looking for a different experience and, you know, it's maybe a different economic level and that supports businesses on a, on well, a different I, level. Well, I, I completely understand how it supports someone like me. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not sure that I, I know what language to use to explain to the owner of, of Canyon Supply how it's going to help the, the people that own our building. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I'm curious about. It's like, how do we talk it, it, the same conversation that you guys are having with the owners? Isn't really the same conversation that I would have with the shop owners. Is it? Um, um, let's, let me think about it and try to come up yeah. with some language for you, because I know what you're asking, and I, it is a little bit of a different conversation, but Canyon Supply, she wants, you know, really quality customers that are coming in, not just to come in and, like, buy gummies on Bryant Street and go to the brewery. You know, those aren't her customers. And I think... No, I'm and they are, I mean, they aren't my customers yeah. either, but I've, <laughs> I you know, I've, I've customers, noticed that, but, yeah. that since, since COVID... Um, the, the, the people that we see are those people. And then they, yep. they go, they go on a hike, they get an ice cream, they buy gummies and they go to the brewery, you know, they're they're And, and then walking up and down the arcade, they're saying to their families, yeah, let's look at the stores, honey, but we'll stop at the outlet store on the way back. Yeah, the outlet, exactly. You know, so, yeah, so I you. think that, yes, I do think that we, I mean, I'm happy to, to 
work on that with the other shopkeep shopkeepers um, who don't own their buildings. But um, yeah, I think I think the language is something important. And and I'm just curious what the owners are saying, like. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Let's let Gina, let's let Gina come in, and then I I will tell you uh, what I'm what I'm uh, saying. Gina. Okay. Hi. Um. I just. Uh, I know we're going to go to the ethics next, Epi, but um, I do want to just kind of have you keep it in your head. I, I wanted to have a discussion about like someone. I, I don't. I never want um, J Jenny to have to recuse herself. And is she on both sides of the contract? Not as a property owner, but as a merchant. If she's reaching out to people personally versus uh, representing, you know. So just kind of keep, kind of keep that in your head. So when we talk about that, because I just want to make sure it's done in a way that, um, like Matt says in his presentation, as long as we get ahead of it and we think about it, you know. Okay. No, yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Gina. I think that's the question. Like there was a male voice do, talking. Do we that. do we reach out or do we not reach out? Okay. Okay. Right? So Jenny, so so when I talk to property owners or parcel owners, um, I emphasize to them, and and to get back to the time frame, uh, Gina, that you talked about, I I uh, talk about that we're currently that we're celebrating the hundredth anniversary of Ojai. And that celebration is not going to be limited for a certain time. Nobody knows the exact date, the exact minute. So I just still park on that. Um, from a business uh, owner standpoint, uh, I talk about the Mills Act benefits. Uh, the other thing, and, so, and we're going to talk about that as the part two of this, is not only the Mills Act uh, uh, benefits that will, will come to that, uh, that should come to that. And then also what we're talking about is uh, adjusting the process. And this is something that I, I know it said, well, Brian Akins, I was just the, uh, the messenger because uh, we talked about this all through the ad hoc is that we're, we want to, people are, in fact, the, again, not to harp on the Pac Bell lady. Uh, she was like, yeah, why would people do that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not talking to you anymore. Um, <laughs> And then I, um, but you know, it's the benefits that that are going to come to this. One is the Mills Act benefit, potential benefit. One is a streamlining of the code, and also uh, some changes where the Mills we wouldn't have to go the Mills Act, Act way, which takes time and money, and uh, and instead go, going to uh, the ones that we propose. And I'm trying not not to. Uh, step into part two. So from a business uh, owner standpoint, uh, improving the code and uh, making it easier to get a Mills Act uh, discount. And everybody I talked to seems to know what a Mills Act is. So, but you know, as for business owners, I, do, I have no information on who the business owners are. Uh, I am just focused in the weeds on parcel owners and that's overwhelming enough. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that that's the most. I mean, to me, my feeling is that that is the most important. That's the most important vote. I mean, that's the vote. Those are the people. Um, I agree. Yeah, but so right, but, right but now, you, Penny, you you are a merchant in a state designated historic downtown district. Now, what we need to do is make it a local district so the property owners can get benefits so your property that you're renting um, stays nice. And, you know, if there's a leak in a gallery, it's not going to be a good thing. You're going to lose that tenant. So, and as costs go up to do repairs, it'll be nice to be able to offer that to, um, to our property owners yeah. and to um, make it so when they do want to do something, we can um, work with planning to where we can slimline those um, things so you won't have to jump through a million hoops to get anything done to have it be um, part of a cohesive downtown uh, local district. So so I think there's a lot of benefits. It's just getting the word out there and um, talking to people. But I, um, I I have faith that we can do this. So here we go. <laughs> um, let's, can we talk about the, the Mills Act now? 
Uh, um, not yet. I have but. another comment to Jenny's point okay. about the business owners. You know, I, our previous discussion about um, people coming here to ba essentially drink and get high is, you know, it's a problem for shoppers. But you look at a historic town like Carmel, and they are there are a lot of eating and drinking establishment. There's tons of shopping going on. And, you know, these little historic towns that have these fantastic little boutiques and things, they sell... You know, they, the shops do very, very well. So in looking at what's happening with Ojai now, and particularly what's come through our commission, looking at the theater and the El Roblar, which, you know, benefited from the process here, and I think those owners would certainly agree with that, that's going to bring in a better visitor, a better... And I, when I say better, you know, I'm not putting the other people down, but I'm just saying a, a different type of visitor that does want to shop and would visit the arcade, not just to go to an outlet mall on the way home. It's not that customer. So just those two key Well, I agree. Stones, I agree you know? with that. So when you're talking to business owners, that's kind of the language is, you know, these two buildings and structures were guided to be a certain way and they're going to bring in certain other types of visitors and let's have that happen consistently throughout the town so that the town is elevated and brings in the type of visitors who will visit the stores and support the businesses and aren't just coming as day trippers because it's you know easy you know easy to get a beer um, i do think that um i chose when I moved here um, 20 years ago, I, I chose here because of our um, downtown historic district. I mean, it wasn't, I thought it was a historic district at the time, but um, because of its charm and because of all the little shops in there. So I think that um, I wanted to be in walking distance to the arcade. I wanted that to be a part of our daily lives and it, and it has. And I think that, you know, you also, um, that's something that attracts not just visitors from far away, but it attracts our locals. You know, when the beauty of downtown keeps our locals happy, the upkeep, the, um, you know, not having it fall in disarray. I mean, it's all of that keeps not just our visitors coming, but our residents here and happy and part of a community. And that's what makes Ojai special. So I think that when we think about, um, everyone we have to include our locals too because those people are um you know i mean i i support so many so many places in downtown because this is this is my home it's my community so yes, the, i agree i mean so, I, I my business would would not exist without local uh customers so so uh, you know i agree i mean i think that um y y any language cindy you know that you the media soundbite, right? Um, that you have in everyday conversation with other shopkeepers would be would be helpful. Okay. Um, to, and to build on, on what you just said, so the one of the things I emphasize in in the cover email that goes goes with this is the fat as a bit of the backstory history. The, to how we became a state historic district, and uh, in the th and so people go, well, did that infect anybody? And uh, whether you, you know it or not, uh, because that we're a state historic district is why we're here tonight. Without the uh, what took place in April 2018 with us becoming a state historic district, uh, before finding that it this was going to go straight to the planning commission and not to us is that correct you're talking about the um pack bell building yes yes that's true okay so as an example to them on i explained to them that it's coming before us because of the state CEQA requirements that were put in place when we became a state historic district i talk about the issues, that, uh, again, El Roblar, the back and forth, uh, these are with business owner type people, not with individuals, but, you know, somebody who asks. So has the state had an impact? And yes, it had an impact on the El Roblar project. Again, Lucas and I were going back and forth on that 
uh, last year, he, and he was uh, talking with other people. So that made a change. And then what I try to emphasize is the re that we, and in my, the headline, it says local, and they're in caps, downtown, Ojai, local, local Ojai historic downtown pro proposal. Be, and what it is, is it says that we are trying to uh, put in place local control and the possibility of local benefits. Because being local really appears, appeals to our local parcel owners, our local people, because, you know, if we were any other small entity in the state, they wouldn't be coming to us as they are. And so that ties in with what uh, you, and, you and Gina and Jenny uh, had to say. Um, are we ready to move on to part two? <laughs> part two. The uh, code. Are you talking about the ethics? What, are you, no, uh, the code. Uh, she's, yeah. Uh, I think Chair Quillacy is talking about the municipal code in terms Chair of Quillacy. the... I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that I a compliment? That. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> I, my I like apologies. Steve. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, the, okay, so we're talking about the, um, the code, the recommended code change. Number two. <laughs> yeah, as a discussion piece and, and uh, having a, a vote really by this, by this commission, sending that forward and having that discussion now. Yes. Right. Yes. So. Well, apologies for the. Oh, that's okay. It was like a wink, wink. <laughs> right. And well, so. I, uh, oh, can I start? Uh, no, let's have a staff report first, and then we'll <laughs> switch you over. Well, well actually, there isn't um, a staff report. It's really Lucas opened it up and talked about the fact that there was going to be a review and update to discuss the ad hoc, ad hoc committee's progress, which you've done and then the second thing on this um, at this section here number three on the agenda is for the commission to discuss a recommendation to the council um, by you by the, this commission to amend the municipal code to allow properties identified as contributing within the local downtown historic district to be considered for entering into a mills act agreement with the city without being required to provide historic resources report. So now the commissioners can discuss among themselves here in this public entity as to whether or not you um, all together would like to th to do that, to present that to the council. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Gina, did you have comments so, on that? I, I do have. Okay. So when we talk about our local historic district, there's um, financial benefits um, I mean, there's all sorts of incentives and, um, you know, uh, we can talk about, Cindy's talking about free paint. I mean, there's all sorts of things going out there. But when you talk about money, there's federal, state, and local. And when um, you're talking about federal money, it is large-scale projects. When you're talking about this new state money, it looks exciting and everything, but it's so brand new that we don't know a lot of, of the language with it. But what we can control and what we can suggest is the local um, money, which is Mills Act. And um, we, what we were just talking about was uh, with Jenny asking about what is, what's the benefit to the property owners. And we were talking about the expense of um, upkeep on a, on a building and on an aging building especially. And, and being able to go into a Mills Act contract where you would get a um, deduction of your property taxes, so you would be able to then offset the costs of of um, upkeep on these buildings. And so I think that um, that is one thing that we right now have for our landmarks. But uh, we know from our state historic downtown district that con the contributing properties um, uh, do have value and to our community and, and, and to the district and to be able to extend that to our contributing properties and to have them have access to this. I mean, if it, if it was like a free for all and it was just every single property owner one to a Mills Act, we've talked about with James, it doesn't have to be, they could limit the amount each year because it's like every five years, so some could come off, some could come on. I mean, they, the city can decide how it sees, the city council can decide. But I think it's important that we do 
present it to go forward tonight to council to to have a discussions about about having uh, Mills Act be for um, our our contributing properties. I think that is such a value and it's so important, especially right now with cost rising. Yes, exactly. And so that's why I never talk about federal and I never talk about state. I just talk about the changes that, you know, we've been discussing in the ad hoc committee meeting over this time. And we also discussed with the city council when we met them with them on January 18th. And, and those are the two things. One is to uh, streamline the process by on uh, businesses that are within the contributing section that we've done a fair amount of background on is having that uh, be done by a uh, ad hoc committee on the um, HPC and two is to open up Mills, Act, Mills Acting uh, properties with the tax benefits savings that comes from that without having to go through the landmarking process first. But again, those, these are all recommendations going off to the city council and something that we'll talk about and, and uh, decide on recommending to them. But yeah, that's what, what I emphasize. Uh, so my experience in talking to property owners is that if the city council were uh, amen, amenable to amending the code, that was a tongue twister, to amending the code um, so that contributing buildings didn't have to create a historic report to apply, that's a huge, huge push to make a historic downtown core. I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Lucas, that the buildings that are designated historic do not need historic reports because of the Caltrans report. Is that correct? Yeah. They're off the hook. They're off the hook unless there has been an extended amount of time. That, that's the discretion of, of staff myself. What's an extended amount of time? What does that mean? Uh, let, me, let me give you examples. We have had historic resources reports with a historic that's already been designated historic landmarks mm -hmm. that have had a kind of refresher done and that's has. yes yeah. and that's if they're doing renovations or adding or making modifications okay. those are on a case-by-case -case scenario but yeah on our map here contributing landmarks that i'm looking at those contributing landmarks are pretty solid i mean um the, it says contributing landmark, and that's the dark gold color. They're um, not really compromised, the ones I know that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. But the contributing buildings that are the lighter gold color are, I mean, I think I'm looking here, Wachter's is one of those. Okay. You know, that's a contributing building. The AT&T building is contributing. I can't name them all in here. But I've spoken to several property owners that have contributing buildings and some who have um, land, well, they're not landmark yet, but like Porch Gallery, which is a... Yeah, they would be just con contributing landmarks are yeah. landmarked already. Yeah, they would be, they are so, you know, it's very expensive to get a historic report for a one, a person who owns one building. It's a process, it's torture, really. And if they don't, have to do that because there's this overriding report i think that is you know for a, let's say a window of time whatever you know window of time that the city decides when they're looking at this i think that would be a, a really a big attraction to property owners to support a historic downtown core that's a huge deal you know and that's really their main savings. It's like you said, their main local savings, their main Mills Act savings that Gina pointed out. They don't need to go through this, you know, so many hoops and torturous process. So I, you know, I would love to see the city council consider that. And I would think uh, getting a Mills Act uh, tax benefit would lower the pressure on raising the rents. Yeah, it benefits the businesses in town, you know, in a big way. And and the um, historic tax credits on any repairs, if they are able to go through the Mills Act process, then they qualify for historic tax credits, and that helps commercial property owners to keep the rents down on the businesses, which then supports our business and our vibrant downtown. So all it's just a win-win all around. And my, you know, my concern would be that the city council might consider the fact like some kind of lost revenue on the Mills Act application fee, but I think that is 
negligible compared to the overall benefit of having landmark properties that are creating more robust business in a more robust town in a long term picture, you know, rather than trying to get two grand from a MILSEC application. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that would be very short term thinking. So I would address that, you know, in a presentation to the city council. It's more of a, it's a long term vision. Yeah, and just to remind everybody, the Mills Act also has that ten year. Um, yeah, ten year window. You can renew it, but it's right. Not well, it's renewed every year, but yeah, you're, every ten years we're yeah. we're looking at those modifications and I would say preservation. The contract uh, comes up every. It's a ten year contract. Correct. Yeah. 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 No, I I think it's a it's a much bigger picture, and it needs to be presented as a big picture item, not just you know this is the money you lose, but this is the money you make. Yeah. Uh, I do talk to uh, every uh, individual or every uh, head of the organization personally uh, before I send any I, and get their permission to then to send that information off. So I give them my 30 se second pitch to run through all this information. Mm -hmm. uh, I even did the voting because uh, one of the people I talked to has that weird, quirky voting arrangement, and I explained it. I said, Do you understand what I just said? And he said, Absolutely. I said, <laughs> woohoo. Um, so, um, yes, Gina. Lucas, is it possible that I know that we talked about wanting to be on the agenda for planning to maybe have an ad hoc um, with them to work on any slimlining, streamlining that we can do on our code to make it so more cohesive for our downtown historic district and um, either through an ad hoc or just uh, joining in their, their meetings or however we can do it. But I'd like to get that started if we can, just so we're ahead of it, because that is one thing that kind of goes along with this whole idea of Mills Act. It's the two things that we can work on for our property owners is that and is, is um working with planning to try to see if what what's doable and, and what's you know reasonable and what's possible so in in regards to that one thing that might actually uh i don't want to say make sense but is maybe logical in terms of how we're looking at this tonight is to include that as a part of the recommendation in terms of consideration forwarding that to council to say hey we as a commission want to meet with a planning commission to talk about X, Y, and Z. Where are you, where are you as council with that? Yes. Give direction to do that, and then mm -hmm. and then move from there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the the whole meeting with council came about because the city, as I said earlier, uh, happens to own six or seven parcels within the city. And so I uh, approached the mayor a couple of weeks ago because to find out how I can get it on the agenda. She made the suggestion to show up, and that commissioners can uh, commissioners can uh, request that something be put on the agenda. I then reached out to uh, uh, James Vega. Uh, just because I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure he knew that I was going to be there Tuesday night as a part of my commission, commissioner report. Um, and James uh, came back and said, if the commission makes a recommendation, we can take that recommendation to council. For this, it sounds like that, that, like that is the simplest route. If the commission makes a recommendation to council at the next HPC meeting, this meeting, we would be able to schedule for either June 28th or July 12th, no additional request needed. I did not know that, that commissions could make a request to be put on council. So that is there. The council agenda? That is very specific to what we're talking about here. Because we're looking, remember, this whole, this whole situation, I mean, started years ago, but uh, as a part of the joint meeting with council, the discussion was, yes, commission, go back, figure out what, what you're doing with the district, and then bring things back to, to council as, as led. Yes. And that's kind of where we're at right now, it sounds like. There's a couple of items that you're needing some, some guidance, some potential recommendations from, from, 
from council at this point. So yes, exactly. So where we're at. So if you're wondering how it got on the agenda, and, and I do want to compliment Maura. Uh, I talked to her last week about getting this on the agenda, and and uh, to to show how great of a job she did, she uh, put it on the agenda. And uh, before I had a chance to read it, Craig Walker had already given both things a thumbs up. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> great job in translating that to the agenda, Maura. Thank you, Chair Akins. Um, okay, so uh, where do we go from here? Well, I'm seeing three, three pieces to this puzzle. Um, the first, let me just run through them real quick here. Uh, the first is the the historic resources report being removed out of the process um, as a part of the Mills Act agreement. I think that's the first one. The sec for contributing buildings. Contributing bidding. It's buildings. already removed, I believe, for uh, landmarks. The only thing I would say about landmarks is it depends on the age of that report. There may like there are some of those reports that were done in the 80s so or, when or, you're or the 90s. So talking about removing it from contributing buildings, it's also removed. Landmarks are already not, if they want to be Mills Act and they're a landmark, they still have to get a historic report if it's too old. Yeah, but depending on the age. But can there be a review on what's been done to the building since the historic report? Because I don't think it should be a hard requirement if you don't know, if they haven't changed the building substantially and yet the report is, let's say, 20, 30 years old, they shouldn't have to get a new report if the building is intact. Right. So I think there needs to be some kind of a very cursory, small review to see if the building is, you know, the same as it was. Right. I don't know what the language would be, but okay. you know what I mean? It shouldn't be an absolute requirement. If the if the historic report is more than X years old, you have to do another one. I don't. Think yeah, that that's not happen. right. That's not necessarily built into the code, right? Okay, good. It's not a case by case scenario, like I was saying before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Thanks. Case by case. <laughs> okay, <laughs> item like number two. <laughs> and then item number two would be the um, council. I don't want to call it the the vote, but con council consideration regarding properties owned by the city. Is it the V word. Uh, so that's the second so one. basically, uh, the council deciding, giving on the six parcels they have, and they as a council would put yes, I support, or no, I don't support. Is that what you were? Uh, I think that's what you were asking, correct? That's what I was. Uh, well, yeah, I need to go to the council to ask them to put that on the agenda so that uh, they know that there's uh, a number of parcels on which the council is the final uh, decision maker on that vote and right. that that was given to me by Matt when I talked to him a month or so ago so I, I'm I don't have a third one I thought there was a third one here where am I missing this here it's the one about um, the Planning Commission ah yes the yes, thank you the the Joint Planning Commission Historic Preservation Commission meeting So can I make that recommendation, or how, do, how does this work? We could do, all, we Brian, could do it all at once, or we could do it piece by piece. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the <laughs> I love optimistic people. Uh, of course, it all depends upon uh, all the legwork uh, in, in, in getting the 50% uh, uh, plus one support. Uh, from the parcel owners and moving forward. So everything is dependent upon that happening as we know. So just wanted to insert that one caveat. I am not mindful that we do have a guest, a liaison visiting us. So well, that, that's true, Brian, but this is all also part of our due diligence. It's all kind of, you know, all parts of the puzzle piece that we need to be working on at the same time, whether I mean, we, we will have to stop if we didn't get support, but we still have to keep moving along. Yes, I agree with you 100%, Gina, but it is also along, it, it, is, 
it is also along the lines of in my one meeting that I had, one of the board members said, you show me the code change and then I'll, I'll show you my vote. And, and so the fact that we are doing this shows the public in the uh, narrative that we are have taken the step to, to move forward and to propose something to the council and then work with them as Lucas reminds us, we were instructed to do in the January 18th meeting. So I agree with you completely. Yeah. But I also have that in the back of my mind. Yeah, and frankly, some of the public comments that we've had in here, I'm not going to say who the property owners were. You, I'll let you figure it out. But the um, beef was, I have a contributing building, so how does this affect me? You know, what am I going to get out of this? And if this goes through and is supported by the city council, that you know that person who is complaining then has a huge benefit to look forward to, that she wouldn't have had. <laughs> There's a hint. Otherwise, <laughs> so um, that's you know it's it's a huge it's a huge plus for all the buildings. Mm -hmm. One thing to 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 think about regarding one of the pieces, which is that historic resources report and um, whether or not to waive that is within that is really good information that is used and, and derived as a part of the Mills Act, which is the object of record. I think that's something to be thinking about um, moving forward and something I think council will probably be considering as well mm -hmm. and how that ends up getting molded into how a, a Mills Act thing gets applied for and then um, reviewed and used into the future. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Commissioner I mean, James had to leave at 7 o'clock, just so you folks know. Yes, Gina. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> we'll be here when you remember. Thanks. Okay, so are we then, so the three items are the historic resources report removed for contributing buildings in the local downtown historic district for Mills Act. I, I, I remembered Sweet. I, I just wanted to, to add that um, the version of um, that is in our report that we got from Caltrans was enough for the state of California. And it was also enough for Caltrans to suggest that we could also go for a uh, national registry. So assuming that they considered what is in this report and the size of the um, information that they gave on contributing properties was enough for state and for national. Um, I think that is something that council needs to keep in mind when making that decision. Um, and the, let's see, the second one I just wrote down, what was it, parcel? What was the second one, Lucas? The joint meeting? Yeah, the second one was no. that, that, well, joint I guess it could be the second three. one, the joint, the joint PC um, HPC. Well, that was number three. Yeah, and then the the second or the third one, either either way, um, city council vote on property oh, owned by the that's city. right, city vote. Okay, so um, so those are the three things that we're looking for a resolution. Then and then I will relay them in the city council next week during the commissioner's report portion. Well, James seemed to indicate I didn't even have to do that, so I'm. Well, I think it's important to identify that there's consensus from the commission. Yeah, I know that. Forward. Yeah, I, I, yeah. My, not I necessarily, my and I'll turn to the attorney to make sure that that's correct, but it's really more of a, it feels like it's a consensus from this commission to move those three items forward to, to city council. So, Epi. Right. I'll just jump in there and know that that's, that's best practices, although I'm not sure it's a strict legal requirement. Yeah, we don't have um, a resolution before this body, so it's not right. necessarily an official vote, but identifying consensus. And I think we've got that consensus. Um, the only commissioner I haven't heard from is Prepor. Well, I mean, I, I'd say go ahead. I mean, <laughs> okay. I don't. I think that this will, you know, by going ahead with this and presenting it to the council, is that, that was that what you want to hear? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's so no brainer to me. It will, I just think it will move the whole project forward so fast, so much. Okay, great. So 
do you have a consensus or do we need a we don't need a are, do, motion. are we voting do we officially vote no it's one of those things where we express our consensus yeah. seems okay. to be something we're doing more lately <laughs> i like it okay we officially do that okay we've officially consented i officially consent okay um I have a special request before we go on to number five, four. Okay. That we take a brief break. Yes. And we didn't. Yeah, oh, that, that would be great. Yeah. Brian, we didn't miss anybody that was hanging out and waving their hand at us wildly, did we? No, there is no one waving their, with their hand raised. No one's, no one's raised their hand. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure. I, oh, okay. Okay. Yes, so we'll take, uh, how, how many lo minutes do we need? Three, five. five. We'll take a five minute break then. I can go fill up my water. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, uh, Val uh, Valerie James said she had another, another commitment. She had to leave at seven. Do you have any idea?
Hello. They're gone. They're we need one more of you to please come back so we have a quorum. The host would like you to unmute. Oh. That. Oh, there, there's Gina. Okay, we can start. Oh, good. Hi, Gina. Welcome back. Yay. Is it that light outside? Gina looks like she's got a bright sun over her head. Okay. What happened? Did you break it, Brian? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you calling, James? Oh, okay. Okay, are we ready to move on to... Oh, we're still... Oh, that's us that's muted? Oh. Because it's too early to eat at five, and then so we're mute. Cindy, are you there? Can you hear me? We're muted. I'm going to text you. Bye. <laughs> Let's see if she answers. She, oh, I have Gina's number, too. And by the way, I talked to her. Kimberly. It's okay. She won't answer. She never answers. Oh. Oh. What? I talked to Kimberly McLynn last night, who owns... Uh, Oh, hi. I, I was trying to talk to you. I couldn't, didn't know if you could hear me. Jenny, we're muted. Brian was playing with the computer and he muted the city hall. So now they have James Hahn on the phone trying to unmute us. That's why you can't hear us. Oh my God. That's hysterical. I can, let me just jump in here. I can, I can hear. So I think James fixed. Oh, mute. Cause the, right. Okay. Right. So I, I can hear what's happening in council chambers. So I, you should assume that the public. Gina, can you hear well. me? There yes. Oh, now okay. <laughs> now we're just... Yeah, you and me both. I think you can go because I think with Gina we have a quorum. Alright. So, yeah. we're on mute, we're good to go. We're no, they're, we're here. There's so just a reason, technical. So it's up, technical. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're getting rid of all the bugs before the council meeting on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Are we it's usually it's typically a user? Not Brian Aikens. Okay. Do Ethics training. We're fixed. Okay. Bye. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So a, a, a two-hour ethics training video was forwarded to um, to the commissioners, and he, hopefully you had the opportunity to watch it before tonight's meeting. If 
if you didn't, then you can just let us know that you didn't. And if you did, this is a time for questions and discussion, and that's one of the reasons why we have the deputy city attorney here. And for those of you who did watch it, um, we have certificates that will be forwarded to you after the meeting. And ethics training is something that is required every, I think, two years. And so um, if you didn't watch it yet, I believe you still have the opportunity to watch the one that I sent to you. And then, uh, sorry, I saw Lucas just press the, press the button. And then inform us, um, staff at City Hall, and so then you can get your certificate. And of course, if you have any questions, um, we can get those answered for you. And I'll turn this over now to Lucas. Yeah, and there's a, there's a link. I only wanted to just add one little piece. There's a link on our agenda as well that allowed for anybody um, that wanted to watch it um, via the public could to, could watch it as well. So it wasn't just emailed to this commission, but it's also available for, for the public as well. Um, and we have the deputy city attorney, Epi, who is available for, for any questions that the commission has uh, from that two plus hour uh, <laughs> training. Yes, Lucas, just two hours, not two and a half. <laughs> um, so, uh, are you waiting for us to declare? I watched it. Watched it. Okay, thank you. Did any, any other commissioners watch it? Watch it. Jenny raised her hand. Gina. Gina, did you watch the? Uh... Yes, I watched the whole thing. Okay, there we go. Woohoo! And I was already. Um, <laughs> no, I. I'm sorry. I said that I. I have not watched it yet. Okay. Okay. So I, I was. Also so I will let Marsh. Should I let you? Should I let the office know when I've watched it? Sure, that would be great. Thank okay. You. And um, I was already told on the phone. I think it was today or yesterday that Commissioner James um, has not watched it. Okay. Or they hadn't, as of this morning, anyway. Okay. Okay. So, so this is this is your time for okay, so um, any questions or discussion about the about the video. Okay. So. Um, Gina, go, uh, go right ahead. I just had the one item, and it actually was one that revolved around you, so I will let you go first. I just wanted to bring my question back up. So. Please. What's your question? The one that I asked about uh, Ginny being a, a, a merchant oh, okay. in our arcade and, and um, reaching out to property owners and um, what we can do to make sure she – we do what we can so she can still vote and not have to recuse herself. And I wasn't sure as a merchant, but it will benefit her as a merchant to have a historic district. So it was just kind of a little gray area there. So I wasn't, I wanted to make sure that we uh, keep it clean there. Sure. Um, I think it'll take uh, a little bit more research, but my initial answer is that uh, I think it's okay because generally officials are allowed to act um, when they are acting on stuff that's generally applicable. So if this was an action that would only affect, uh, you know, the business next door or you know the, the her landlord, that would be different. But because this is a generally a, would be a generally applicable designation, um, it should be okay. Um, with the qualifier here that um, which I have to look up because I haven't done um, I have I don't know if this has come across with um, historic planning commissions um, before. Thank you, Epi. Jenny, do you have your hand up? I do, I do, I have my hand up. Um, that was just a suggestion to everyone. That's, you know, I, if that is not the right thing to do, to, to talk merchant to merchant before everything is decided with property owners, then, you know, I could I understand that. I, I just, that was just something that I threw out there as would it be helpful, would it not be helpful, you know, we, yeah, I just that's I just wanted to make sure that you don't never lose your vote and have to recuse yourself. That's right. why um, one of the things when you when you watch it that um, that he speaks about Matt talks about it, is is staying ahead of it and making it's always easier to do something ahead of time than it is to try and do something after the fact. So I just wanted to make sure that okay. if there was a little gray area that we cleared it up before you did reach out. OK, OK, thank you. And I think we're cleared up. And you're good to go, if I understand correctly. Is that correct, Epi? Uh, I would just caution. I, I think 
it, it needs a little bit more research before I oh, the, okay. uh, the city attorney's office signs off on it. If that's acceptable to the, the yes, yeah. um, just just you know, like like uh, Commissioner Catton said, you know, we want to be sure that we're we're not having to undo anything um, before we we authorize any action. So um, if it's acceptable to the commission, um, that's the uh, what I, the suggestion that I would propose. Okay, uh, great, thank you. Um, so the the other question when I talked to Mara that I mentioned was a slide that uh, Matt put up that talked about drafts. So when is a draft uh, essentially just a draft, which isn't something that uh, is uh, made available or accessible by the public because it's you just put in your however you define it and when is a draft public something that is essentially public document document and available sure um so the relative line here is that if a document is shared with the commission even if it's in a draft form it would be accessible by public records act requests let's say so that that would mean it's essentially considered a public document. If someone asks you for it, you don't have to share it. But if it comes in through a, a formal channel, essentially asking you for it, that's something that would have to be shared. However, if Lucas and Mora were you know trading drafts of a document related to the Historic Preservation Commission, that is a draft that is protected um, because it's still involved in internal deliberations. So kind of the the defining line here is is when a a uh, work product is, you know, uh, drafted well enough or, or, you know, let's not say complete, but good enough that it's going to, uh, you know, the commission or uh, the planning commission or another body of appointed or elected officials, um, then that is kind of a, a public document. Okay, thank you. Um, I enjoyed the, uh, uh, this, uh, it seemed like there was a maybe a different mix of the people that were listening to it live. And so uh, different questions that were introduced, diff different opinions, that's always helpful to me. Uh, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, I've done ethics before. Well, it changes, opinions change, yeah. So that's all I had. I got nothing. Okay. Jenny, Gina, any other questions on uh, re regarding ethics? For me, for me? No, no, yeah, oh, for, oh, for no, the uh, yeah. training that no, came I, up in I, watching this. Uh, I, I, video. I thought Matt kept it um, lively. I liked his uh, graphics along the way. It was, uh, you know, it, it, it put a little bit of his personality. Not that I'm bragging or anything, but my son just graduated law school, um, leapy for last from Pepperdine Law School. And um, he, Matt, something about like his mannerisms and, and the, his sense of humor, it's just so much like my son, it just makes me laugh. But so I think um, I, I enjoyed it on that level. I think that he has a really funny, you know, a uh, humorous way of, of presenting something that's really dry. And I think that he used really good examples. I think he did a good job and uh, I enjoyed it. I, I learned a lot. Okay. I'll pass that on. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. More? Okay. We are now on item number five. Is that future items? Future agenda items? That is future agenda items. Okay. Preservation award discussions, preservation award nominations. So come to the next meeting July 14th with some nominations in mind. Yep. How is this a year already? <laughs> I say the same. I say oh this, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> wow. It's true, but I, you know, I just go back to when we started this process a year ago, we had no idea the lasting impact it was going to have in having, in presenting it to Alan Rains uh, and then having him just pass away just days later. Uh, we had no idea a year ago when we were going into this, and uh, Cindy made that nomination that that's, you know, what an impact yeah, uh, to us. So know. you never know. Okay, uh, let's see. Just so you know, too, uh, we have two commissioners that are up for reappointment. I called uh, Gail today 
and we are next up with the Planning Commission uh, to come before the uh, City Council. And uh, again, the nominations or, or possible reappointments um, uh, are, uh, it is Councilman Wyrick and Council, uh, and Council Member Wyrick and Council Member Francina who are, will be doing the nominations uh, for the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. But we are next up in the queue. Uh, they are doing Tuesday night, uh, they're, uh, I don't know if they're reappointing, but I know they're in both the Arts Commission and in the Planning Commission. They had some vacancies that, that they filled, and so they've, uh, they've made those nominations, and they're in the planning or in the uh, agenda for City Council next Tuesday. Okay. Um, um, I have an item I'd like to add to July 14th, if possible, or discussion. Uh, it's the comments that we had in public comments at this meeting about the cottages among the flowers and the, um, I forget what the other, oh, Troy, Troy Lodge, I guess. You know, and the way they just, the report they presented is really interesting, but it's also the original affordable housing of Ojai. Those buildings were built in 1929 as affordable housing. So, uh, you know, I, I would like to see that come before us. I'd like to see a historic report they have this small report, but I really think that that needs to be, um, that just shouldn't go to planning and be considered a condo project with a few affordable elements. You know, I think it's a historic um, issue. Okay. It's all, you know, it's always, it's So I can't, I can't go into the, the details of it, but it did come before planning commission at their last meeting. Yeah, I know that. As a development agreement. But right. I feel like it, it needs to bounce back to us the way the El Roblar did. Because it's a, it's a very historic area. I'm very familiar with it. And the way it was built, the history there, the people who live there, the way it contributes to Ojai, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting piece of the community, the downtown community. So, okay. yeah, I don't know if you want to, you know, spend, yeah, I know you, know, we all did not have any time to spend looking at the report they brought us. Yeah, I, I've seen that report. Oh, it's can. been around for a while. Uh, I had no idea what they were going to talk about. Okay, so. yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it needs to be considered f here as well as in the Planning Commission. Okay. Is okay. that possible? So from a development agreement standpoint, the process is Planning Commission, City Council. Mm -hmm. um, I can't go into the details of this, but... Maybe as an informational item, it could come back here just to talk about the two historic resources report that were put together for both Mallory and Cottages. Mm -hmm. But why so, would we talk about it if it's not going to affect the process? There's no, yeah, because there's no changes to, to either one of those projects as a part of the development agreement that was moving forward, meaning that the, the details that um, the individuals were talking about mm -hmm. are consistent with what was originally um, a part of the approvals by, by one of the commissions, which is Planning Commission, and then um, City Council. Aren't they talking about finals. tearing it down and building condos, right? Yeah, well, you're, I, I can't get into the details of it because it's not an, an item on the agenda. Meeting? Wasn't plan, oh, oh, we can't. I can't, okay. we can't get into the details of it. I, I, I can't go any okay. further than that without. Okay. But I, I think what could happen is I could, I could talk about the, the history of of where, because there is some rich history with both of those sites that I think would be um, good for this commission, because this commission did see um, those historic resources reports. It did come before this body. So I think it's important to acknowledge that and recognize development? that. Development? I didn't see. Not the development the, agreement. The, Not the development the, agreement. Yeah, the, the projects as individual projects. This so I, is... I can't go this into report I can't, dated September yeah, I can't go into any more I, I can't go oh, into any I wasn't more here in 2006. Yeah, it was no. a long it was a while ago. None of us were. So that's <laughs> like I, I yeah, I, years ago. I I can't go okay. into any more yeah, detail, I just, but I think what I can, can happen. Oh, here we go. Thank you. No, I was just going to sorry, I was just going to say that um be, because it was considered at the the last planning commission hearing and which dealt tangentially at least with the historic preservation uh element and that this is in fact still kind of a, a live issue um I, I suggest we kind of steer clear of this as, as lucas um is uh, suggesting um uh, the video of the planning commission 
uh, hearing is, is available online, I believe. Um, I think that's the, the first place to start, uh, as well as the, uh, the development agreement itself. Um, which which touches on the historic element of uh, some of the problems. That's actually a really good point. I, I would go back and cause that was a fairly extensive discussion that we went through. Um, Planning Commission. Yes. Yes. And I think it's probably worth watching that first. And if you have any questions. Okay. Yeah. I'm that's, just sort that's of one of the things I was going to ask Lucas, should we go back and watch that? Yeah, I would suggest doing that first. Yeah. Okay. So just a Thank general you. question is why, if there is a historic report, for this, a project like this, why isn't it coming in front of us before it's going to planning because in general? Not necessarily this project, but it's a historic it res, you know, resource building with a report, and yet we only are seeing it because public comments came along. Lucas, she can't see, but there's a comment from Oh, the, we have a comment, yeah. Absolutely, uh, well. I'm just gonna make it a story. Okay, I mean, sorry, Lucas, not. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the issue is that it did come before the historic commission, you, right. but it was so long ago. Right. None of you weren't on the many of you. I don't know if anyone on the commission now was on the commission. 2014, and I'm the old guy on all the commissions. But no one on so. the commission now was part of the commission that received the report and approved entitlements with those reports. That's all so long ago. So it did come before the commission. Isn't there a statute of limitations, though? If it if it came here well, seven or eight years again, ago, I'm not going to deliberate on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm say, questioning. What, it's yeah, a question. I, exactly, and I think that's what Lucas is trying to get to. Yeah, is that the um, entitlements were up for renewal? Mm -hmm. They weren't renewed, pending wrapping into a development agreement. And so, at this point. Uh, I would suggest personally as one council member that the um, referral has been made from Planning Commission to council. You're going to be before council anyway, I believe, Tuesday uh -huh. in a commission report. I don't see personally any, pro any problem with expressing a concern or an interest. Okay. In front of council, okay. I hope Lucas is okay with that. <laughs> I think yeah. it's. I think that's fine. You know, we just I, can't get into the details of, of we can't the project. Get into it's the, not on the. It's not on the agenda. Yeah, so we can't it, go it, back. I hope forth. I, I hope I understand. That the, that's what's odd about this, is your, is it is it did come before historic commission yep. yeah. a long time ago, and was deliberated, and the historic commission approved, the entitlement that, then expired, but then expired conditional on those entitlements being wrapped into a development agreement with some changes. So it's a, it's a complicated situation. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at my liaison report. There we Thanks. go. Yeah, I was okay. more, I that makes some sense. Yeah. I was it, questioning it, the process, not necessarily well, I, That's what I'm talking about is the process. Yeah. There so. was a process where the, this, these historic reports were fully vetted mm -hmm. in front of an, the historic commission in a previous time. <laughs> and then, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was aware of that. I have actually this report. I have a very slick package that was done for cottages among the flowers. And I asked for a copy when that was done. So I knew that it had come before us and been before us. Otherwise, I normally go to every single meeting there is that has anything to do with the historic nature of the valley. And this one, I'm like, yeah, that was before me. <laughs> I'm bowing out right at the moment. But yeah, so before um, Tuesday night, I will watch the Planning Commission meeting um, and get some background on that. Very good. OK. Thank you. Um, anything else? Anything else? Uh, who's up next? St uh, staff report? Commissioner, oh, planning report. Nothing to report <laughs> regarding this. We, we don't have anything to report. If you want to talk about, we have a pending project on this, this on this um, calendar here. Well, we've already gone through the calendar. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, commissioner comments. Let's see, commissioner comments. Um, 
just for me uh i i told uh cindy last saturday i did uh get the on friday i got the keys from uh, public work uh, key from public work saturday i did open the jail for about 45 minutes for uh elizabeth and uh matt bart's books and one interv other individual um because they wanted to take some more pictures inside and how many it's funny when we opened the jail and to do that Oh, I've never been inside the jail. Can we go in the jail? Sure. <laughs> I'm all for anybody coming in while well, we have it open. This time we only had a, we had a, a family, and uh, uh, the time before when we had it open for a couple year, uh, a couple hours, it was more. I think uh, somehow we ten or twelve people came in, but so we loved the jail being opened. And uh, so they're working on the project. They thought it would be the, uh, they seem to indicate that it would be the week before uh, OI Day. Good. So. Thanks. Um, I don't have anything else. Uh, any other commissioner comments? I don't have any. Okay. Not for me. City Council liaison, come on up. Yeah. Um, always learn something watching you guys deliberate. Um, I thought it was fascinating just to think about with the public comment and the, and the concerned uh, people living there and the, bringing up the, uh, the, the, the uh, historic resources report. I had forgotten. I had forgotten. I, that's what I love about historic resources report. It gets immortalized. You can look it up. It, it becomes part of the, the archival memory of the, of the community. I did not remember that that was a consciously affordable development. I didn't. In the 20s. And we're talking about the reason the council appealed the decision of the planning commission. You know, if, but for the council appealing the planning commission, those entitlements as is would have been renewed and the construction would have been happening already. Mm -hmm. So a council appealed the decision of the planning commission for the issue of preservation of affordability. There was not going to be any affordability in the entitlements approved by the Planning Commission until the, uh, until the, uh, uh, count, that's, the council appealed that decision. Uh, what, three years ago, something like that? Four years ago? And we, we, uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to Bill Miley, uh, our citizen activist researcher He's amazing. Extraordinaire. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> I'll never forget the call I had one day. He said, have you read code blah, 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 blah? And I said, no, I haven't recently. And I read it and I went, oh, okay. Thank you, Bill. And that was the basis for yeah. the council appealing. Um, but what I wanted to say is it's fascinating. I think the ratio between land costs and building costs in the 20s when the affordability was a goal for the cottages is entirely different than it is today. Today, the two drivers, uh, most an analysts say, of the housing costs are, uh, are um, <clears throat> land costs and, uh, and, and regulatory requirements, <laughs> you know, and, and zoning restrictions. And so the, the percentage of cost of housing that's accounted for just by the, the, the cost of the dirt is much higher now than it was in the 20s. And so now we have this tension because affordability uh, really, it is hard to avoid the issue of infill as being one of the ways to achieve affordability in today's environment, given the cost of land. Mm -hmm. And so you, you ask, well, in the 20s, if the land ratio costs were the same, would they have considered two-story then in service to that goal in the 20s? And that creates this tension that we constantly have in today's world between historic preservation and how we you know, appreciate the way things were designed then versus the mandates we're getting from the state legislature and the housing element and our goals for, for uh, how to achieve um, affordable housing now, increase in affordable housing supply now. So it really listening to the, um, those citizens really drove home thinking about that as I was listening to them. I'm still thinking about it. Uh, and so if you would, I would urge you to please bring those um, 
concerns in your commission report okay to the council because that's going to be the next venue before you even have a chance to have anything else on the agenda and I, i'm not going to speak for my colleagues but i would certainly welcome that perspective being part of our deliberation when that development agreement comes to council next up for discussion uh so that that's one thing um no, we're not concerned about fees. Okay, good. Well, at I all. wanted to bring it up. Okay, you know? in fact, every council member I've spoken to about this without, you know, that's come up in various aspects without violating the Brown Act and in, in open public comment is please do everything you can to sweeten the deal for the historic district. Bill, there was a comment in the newspaper, the editorial in the paper, James yes. had referenced um, a potential loss of m income for well, the city. That did not represent any yeah. words out of any council person's right. mouth. Exactly, but I just <laughs> wanted to bring it up because it was referenced in the newspaper. In, in the uh, editorial of the newspaper, yeah. uh, yes. Um, yeah. Good. No, I'm, I understand the council's yeah. position. Yeah. Sorry so for interrupting. I, I really feel like the council is... Uh, my sense of the council is absolutely appreciative of your bringing up this option. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine anything but support for doing it and welcoming the request for the text amendment that would accomplish this. It's exactly the kind of thing that I was in my mind thinking about. You know, I was one of the you know, advocating, let's let the Historic Commission go with this, think about it, research it, talk to the property owners. You're doing exactly what I hoped you would do and more. So thank you. And I, I suspect there's going to be nothing but overwhelming support uh, for um, doing uh, changing the benefit cost calculus as much as possible, the net benefit from the standpoint of property owners and business owners. So I personally am very supportive of it. And I'm one of five votes, but I'm pretty confident everyone Great. Thank will you. be supportive of it. Um, and so the... Um, and, and anything else along those lines, <laughs> frankly, you know, that you, that you can do. Um, at the risk of opening up a can of worms, I'm going to ask a procedural question. Uh, if the development agreement is approved by the Planning Commission, it's a question for staff through the chair, my understanding is there's still a round of design review permits that will be occurring for each of the uh, phases for one of the phases With the well mouth. potentially two for potentially two yes one would be the Montgomery site Montgomery. and the second would be World University that's right those two right uh, and so uh, uh, is the work Mike that was my question is World University uh, they're actually not looking at any exterior changes to world right so that probably there's no issue, there's no historic issue there since it is part of the downtown, but there's no historic issue there. Without going into too much detail, the only thing that I would see potentially would be changes in doorways and, and windows right. to okay. accommodate for the residential change. Okay. I just wanted to give that perspective from the, you know. Uh, and then uh, one other, I thought, interesting conversation you might, I might relate at the risk of, of wasting your time is that I've had in a conversation with a city, two city council people in Santa Paula, the, the planner and the mayor. Oh, no, and the city manager, by the way. He used to be a city manager here, by the way. Mr. Singer, you might remember him. Mm -hmm. uh, and the conversation was along the lines of, you know, we need to do more of what you guys are doing in terms of identifying our downtown in Santa Paula as an historic resource, and that would really help people be attracted mm -hmm. to – coming to our downtown and we were talking about ways of kind of being sister cities about promoting our historic downtowns and the and the benefits of that they're very interested good and yeah. maybe doing some i had to i'm not talk. I, I don't want to say cross promotion that's not what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. but sort of a cross appreciation um it was it was kind of interesting when one conversation i had with the uh city manager, I said, you know, we're kind of being inundated at times um, in our town. And he says, well, can you send some to us? <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, you know, probably if you do a, you know, think about 
we have such a really strong historic preservation commission. We have a really strong sense of local identity and historic celebration of our historic traditions. And uh, you guys could maybe do a little more along those, you know, lines maybe. And so they're, they were thinking about it, and I really complimented them. You know, they're at, at one point, they, there was a big move to move all of their government offices out of downtown, which would have been a disaster. Mm -hmm. And they thought about our example and, and other examples and decided against it. And it was a really good decision. So I'm just saying that there's... Um, we are looked at, you know, as sort of an example at times, and we believe in what we do. And yeah, we, you know, as part of the ad hoc, we looked at Santa Paula. Yeah, and it has, and it has its reach. It's downtown historic district. Right. I joke with people goes all the way up to right. uh, Mupu School. Right. And and you know they have the bones, but they need to yeah more flesh on the bones. And, and I'm sure they have so many entities that are in right. downtown are in the central right. park yeah. that they could just you know tout but i'm just saying i think i think uh, uh it would be an interesting communication yeah to try to i'm trying to promote us talking oh, okay. with one another yeah they're great people kind well, of a sister city do you think there's an opportunity for us to meet with them or for I think them so. to come and visit one of our meeting you know when we're discussing this ad hoc i i, I think if there you is could, if you want to extend an invitation I, I i'll uh, be great. if you uh, would uh, if you feel there's a sense of the hpc you'd like me to do that i'd be happy to uh yeah yeah i think so I'm worried about. I worry about Santa Paula. To me, it's like the last best town. In it's a, it's it really yeah. It's a fantastic place. It has a oh, lot yeah. that they could do. Yeah, to, and it's on the verge the big of tipping. Homes there. Yeah. Big home and the and a, and, a, and a, you know like again they have the bones of the historic downtown, but it's just more than that. It's one of the best um, film locations. Yes, you know? it's a fantastic because so I, it's so I, intact. Yeah, yeah. The railroad's coming back. Right. Really? Yes. Yes, they have a. I'm on the VCTC. I've been involved yeah. with that. They have a new a contract with a new operator, uh -huh. and uh, they're even looking at having the uh, tourist uh, yeah. visitor hand well, carts. Yeah, they used to have the Christmas tree You know, train. the electric, the electric uh, carts along with the, Yeah. You know. Well, this, this one's, yeah, Connie and I were going down the highway, and we're like, I've never been to the trout farm. So we went over there, and we're like, oh, it's closed, and we're sitting there. And there was a guy, young guy, great. Yeah. And I said, so what are you doing here? Oh, we're thinking about opening up the railroad. Well, don't come to Ojai because <laughs> that's what everybody wants is to read it. Right, right. Um, and he was telling all the things. So yeah. they're, And they're going to make their money because they're going to do freight hauling from Ventura to Santa Paula. Right, right. That's going to be part of the income, but then they're also going to be extending all the way out to Fillmore. Yes. Uh, with and Piru, the, all the way into uh, And Piru. Yeah. And they're looking at uh, uh, having the right-of-way, uh, a fully developed uh, bike path along the railway right-of-way all the way through. Um, some of the property owners, you know, don't want those pesky little bicyclists riding through their groves, you know. Uh, but they have the right-of-way. So there's a great potential, I think, for they, that whole area. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, he was amazing. And it's a, yeah. yeah, reputable railroad group. So, yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, again, thank you for your time and your work. And uh, I really appreciate the way you're moving forward on the district. It's a challenge, but you're meeting that challenge. And um, I congratulate the way you're handling it. Thanks. Thank you. There are a lot of wonderful people out there who are interested in us. I had an hour long conversation with uh, one of our landmark owners and yeah, yeah last night. You're quelling some of the initial knee jerk reaction. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, Bill. I am. We ready to go? <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay. And thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you. Brian, your second meeting. Of course. Uh -huh.